chicken so bad. I got hot dogs last night and did it for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I like cold things. I do. I do like this. Cream, cream bacon, bacon chicken too. Do you like fried chicken? I don't know. That's not hot. Mm-hmm. It's really spicy though. Yeah. 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 I prefer turkey. Mm-hmm. Turkey is the best. Yeah. 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 Chicken. What about Popeyes? Uh, That's what he was saying. He had Popeyes oh, for breakfast right? this morning. Oh, yeah. he's different. Oh, yeah. Some people probably just, I don't know if I can do it for breakfast. Oh. Are you done with your food? Yeah. Uh-huh. Football season, right? For the Chiefs. It's all about the Chiefs. Yeah. Yeah. It's brutal. It's been a brutal baseball season, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you think it's time for Sunday for the Chiefs? No, I think we should be here till tomorrow. Oh, no. I, I do appreciate good football. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay. Right, the Royals have to go to Kansas City, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they have to go back to Kansas City for that game. So, they got to play a little bit again. <laughs> so the balls are so that look like they were playing golf. The I hardest guess. sport in the world is golf. Yeah, yeah. that's what's really between it. But there's two sports that you can really <laughs> do. I, I strongly recommend lessons at least a, a first of six lessons: tennis and golf. There's so much uh, somebody that, mm-hmm. and those are by golf pros that teaching pros, not not by somebody like me. And tennis is the same way. Those are two sports that, yeah, play tennis, unless you grew up golf. playing them and you know, no one did in, in this part of the country. Uh, you do need a little bit of guidance on that. A couple of first fish, two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. was a monster. <laughs> I, I can teach you. <laughs> I do consider myself a pretty good fish. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, Good afternoon. Welcome to the second uh, uh, meeting of budgets. Uh, for, you know, it's July 12th. We've scheduled one through four, then a, a wrap up. And uh, unless there's uh, introductory remarks by the city manager, we're on administration. But I'll give it to you, Mr. Kramer. I don't have anything. Um, just as a reminder, uh, wrap up this afternoon. We have reserved uh, tomorrow. Hopefully, we won't need it, but should we? This room is reserved. We make a proper public notification so we don't have to worry about anything related to that. Uh, without further ado, we'll start with uh, the last part of the administration, which is information services. And our information services manager, uh, Carol Trigan. Carol, could you just uh, briefly start? We made a little bit of changes uh, as far as you know, from three employees to four employees. Could you talk about the new employee, uh, where they are, and what they're doing? Okay. Um, yes, we went from three employees to four employees this year. Um, Amy was um, over at PD and the body cameras and the um, MDTs and the the police cars were um, overwhelming to say the least, um, the issues that we have to deal with. So uh, we did get her some help. Um, He started uh, about a week ago, uh, two weeks ago, and um, he has been doing fantastic. He's from Wisconsin, I think. And he was working at a police department there using the in-car um, camera systems and stuff. So um, he's very familiar with a lot of things that we use. They used a different um, brand of um, in-car cameras, but um, the core system, which is net motion, that allows them to uh, communicate with uh, the CAD system, they used up there as well. 
So it's been very helpful for him to be able to step in and basically um, not a whole lot of training was needed. So um, that has been going wonderfully and uh, taken some ease off of Amy for that. So um, there's a couple of things in my budget that reflect that. Um, my budget actually went down this year and I wanted to remind you that the reason it went down is because we moved some of the software maintenance that I usually pay for. I will still pay for that. Um, however, it's going to come out of the public safety's budget because of the tax lid, and I'm not going to pretend to know that. So, um, so that's the reason we moved some of that over back to the public safety um, budgets. And uh, but I will still on that just briefly mm -hmm. um, why we do that. The tax lid that the state legislature put in place has certain exemptions, and uh, public safety or law enforcement is one of them. So while we still have about a million dollars in tax capacity before we would have to put something in front of the voters. Um, it's a, it behooves us to kind of put anything that is public safety related into the public safety budget um, in case we ever did run into the part where we have to uh, bump up against a tax lid. Um, other than that, I increased the office supplies a little bit because we do have more employees now in my division um, to cover that, and I increased the non capital uh, phone budget. Uh, the phones that we have on our desktops um, are running about eight years old. Um, although we haven't had many problems with them, I would like to start replacing them. Um, because if we ever do uh, go to a new phone system, these phones are fairly old and I don't think that they would adapt to any new system that we have. So I'm going to try to start replacing them as we go along. Um, other than that, really nothing has changed in the budget. Questions for Ms. Jarrett? No. No. I've got a quick question. I know it's the Chief's not here, but you're deeply involved in it. All of our cloud storage work on the body cams and things mm -hmm. like that. If this has all evolved in quite, over the last few years, PDs all across the country, what's what's best practices being? What's everyone doing? Not not <coughs> Leavenworth, I'm not sharpshooting what we're doing, but you know, what's the world doing? Because it's a huge amount of data. Right. Um, there are some companies are, or some agencies that are actually um, very reluctant to go to that because um, being able to back up that is, uh, it's very expensive. Um, and it takes more and more space, and then it takes more and more space to go up to the cloud. Um, but, I mean, I think we've been managing it fairly well. Um, we did have an issue. Um, at the beginning of the year um, with some storage space because um, they, the software company had made a tweak in their system which kind of duplicated some videos. Um, so it duplicated the space we needed to back that up. Um, but we've been doing pretty well. Um, some agencies, they don't really have um, a good backup system because it is so expensive. Um, and right now, the, the problem being is that they're coming out with new and new cameras all the time, and they're high quality, and the videos are wonderful, <laughs> but um, they take up uh, more and more space. So it's something that we'll have to um, struggle with as we go forward, but um, I think in terms of, uh, I think it was the right decision to do um, as far as getting the body cameras. Um, it's come in, I know, handy in many cases already um, to be able to have that on file. And I know that you know, for the chief and for Mr. Charity, we're talking about storage. storage. Uh, we, last year, year and a half ago, didn't we buy a couple yeah. dozen terabytes or yeah. I mean, a huge uh, amount of We did research. at the beginning of this year. Uh, um, yeah. And um, we, we that, have it in um, one of the supplementals um, on the budget to purchase um, 84 ter terabytes more. Um, and that should, I mean, we're starting to level off now. Um, we've started putting some retention policies in place on far as some of the cases, but um, then again, we have no control over right. those cases. And um, But the, the amount, amount of terabytes that we bought at the beginning of the year, is that sufficient right now? We're already running out, I don't know, cheaper. I think we've been uh, sufficient. We've been, like I said, you know, pretty leveled out um, the last couple of months, and um, 
I, you know, I think we'll be fine until the beginning of the year. Uh, we've we've been 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 like I said, and I fully uh, anticipate that the last couple months last us and, uh, good three years. Uh, uh, I, you know, I think we'll be the fine until the beginning of the year. Uh, uh, we're 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 more and more coming in. Um, now there's the drones and, um, <laughs> you know, there's the, <laughs> the crime scene <laughs> software. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I mean, so as more and more technology comes, um, but as what we're doing right now, um, we seem to, I fully anticipate that this next um, storage being bought will last us three years. Okay, yeah. okay. thank you. I agree. Uh, but, you know, we learn every day. Yeah. We've learned a lot since we started. We're better, and we just pay attention all the time. And so yeah. we'll continue to try as best we can to project. Um, more concerning moving forward is the higher quality of the video requires more space, and so right. we just have to manage that the best we can. But instrumental in what we do now, uh, the, the murder trial that was a critical piece of evidence, absolutely sealed the deal, I think, and so um, absolutely instrumental in what we do. Yeah, no, I understand. Make sure we have. Okay, any other questions? No. Okay, okay. thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Next, uh, we're at uh, Parks and Rec. Right, there's multiple divisions as we move through this, so, so I'll allow Steve to sort of call up uh, his staff as, as he sees fit as we move through this. I thought it'd be appropriate if I brought, first brought my bodyguard. Yeah. yeah. Really <laughs> Just kind of an overview real quick before we get into the specific budgets. Um, kind of want to bring you up to speed on some of the projects we got going on throughout Parks and Rec. The, uh, the roof replacement of the flat roof down at the community center is over 80% completed and we're waiting on delivery of the, uh, the skylights for that. Um, I'm happy to say the last rain we got a couple of Saturdays ago, there was zero water on the Riverview room floor. So that's the first time in a long time on that, so we're very happy. Um, Parks tractor is on back order, I expect to be here sometime in September. The uh, Cody Park Playground Replacement Project uh, just went out to bid the first part of this week, so it's out there to bid right now. And we still plan on having that uh, community uh, ribbon cutting, picnic, yeah. gathering uh, centered around the opening of the new Cody Park Playground uh, yeah. later this fall. Approximate date? Uh, we're probably going to be doing that in what, late September, September or early October? October. Mid to late October. Where it'll be cooler. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be nicer. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, there's a certain amount of lead time uh, once once a vendor is selected, the equipment is selected, there's a certain amount of lead time as far as ordering the equipment. So that would be dependent upon that. Uh, Performing Arts Center, the fi third and final phase of the HVAC is will be going out to bid tomorrow. So, so that's current. Everything's working well over there um, regarding the first two phases, the air conditioning and the, and the boiler. And then we continue to work um, on the Tyler Parks and Recreation online registration module that we uh, expect to have up and running um, this year. And it's, the ball's kind of in their court now. They're, they're dealing with some integration issues um, between the Tyler cash sharing that we currently use um, and, and the new the T -Bar, Tyler Parks and Rec. So with that, uh, any questions regarding any of the projects or anything before we no, go into that? Sounds good. That's okay. Uh, Parks Department, of course, Brian Bailey, our Park Superintendent. Um, what, uh, things are going very well. One area uh, that some challenges we're facing is in uh, personnel, um, specifically full-time personnel. They're currently uh, down a total of three full-time park technicians. One of them is due to deployment. Um, which obviously is fine. Uh, the other two, though, have left for higher paying jobs. Uh, um, Brian is in, um, currently um, interviewing for those positions. Uh, they've struggled to get uh, qualified apps, and when they have, they actually made an offer where somebody turned it down because they had um, accepted a higher paying job. So um, as far as full-time position, we continue to be down to, they continue to uh, interview for those. Steve, two out of how many total? There's a, in the parks department, there's nine full-time. Uh, the park superintendent, um, the park foreman, and then we also have a mechanic. And then there's six in the field technicians. So when you think of in the field, really two out of those six are, are missing. Now, to combat that, obviously, you'll see Brian or David or, or our mechanic out on mowers. And, and that's just what you do, obviously, to get things done. On the, on the lighter side, or the better side of the personnel issues, um, some of the changes that Brian has made for our part-time help has helped out tremendously to get fully staffed. Um, 
what we did is, is we changed pay structures and age structures for our part-time help where we'll ab we're able now to bring in 16 and 17 year olds to work um, in our park maintenance department with a completely different position description lesser you know lesser um, requirements uh, obviously some of the things you know they're not allowed to pull the big trailers operate the big mowers operate chainsaws things like that and that's helped out tremendously and that we've been good. yeah i've been fully staffed from the part time yeah. um, just a, a couple items uh, that stand out on on the budget itself uh, you'll see a, a increase of uh, ten thousand dollars in the building grounds maintenance and repair line item and, and that's that's to cover a few items over the last two to three years in the, in the CIP. Where we, are you at? Uh, uh, page 53. Oh, you went too far. 6802. Yeah, 6802. Got it. Uh, two out of the last three years, we've put in for the in the capital improvement program monies for uh, to, to deal with some of our more mature trees that either have to be removed or be pruned. Don't get me wrong, our park maintenance does a lot of tree work. These are trees that either have wires going through them or are right over buildings, you know, other other types of things where we just we don't have the, the type of equipment really to, to take care of things like that. Plus our guys aren't line certified, line clearance certified. So any any tree within ten feet of any type of line, even a cable line, um, legally we can't get to it. So that's and then uh, so that ten thousand is to help cover some of those costs annually and then anything beyond that. Um, and in the parks, any type of improvements, whether whether it be the benches, table, picnic tables, um, any of our you know number of restrooms, um, things like that, we were able we were able to work and, and get that put into the operating budget so that something can be done annually. So if we do have a problem with uh, wires, whether they be electrical wires or cable wires above the ground, are you able, and we can't take care of it? Do you coordinate with uh, you know the electric? The electric company like Weststar, or are they, or are they monitor Depending on where it's at. If, if it's one that they'll come out and do line clearance on as part of their electrical right. duties, yes. Generally, though, we're contracting with a tree company, a oh, contractor. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All your local um, certified. I see. Uh, yeah, they all have line clearance certified and do that kind of work. Okay, thank you. Uh, one other line item that's it's 6203 water. Water is a annual year to year. Last year, if you'll recall, we got good rain clear up through the middle, late June. We didn't even turn our irrigation systems on until the first week of July last year. This year, different story, obviously. They've been running hot and heavy since the middle of May. $18,000 is a, is a mid-range ballpark. Some years we might be 13 to 15, and there's been years in the past where I recall where we've been as much as 22, 23. It's just... It's, there's a That's lot a hard of budget one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very difficult to budget. With that, uh, I'll open it up. Uh, unless Brian has anything to add, I'll open up for any questions that you all might have regarding uh, the park. Have you guys thought about having cameras at the back end parks? I know that you guys have uh, experienced some damage and a lot of gang graffiti's mm -hmm. written on the walls as well, too. Yeah, we have talked about that, and maybe that would be a good item that I can look into uh, for the CIP. Um, we run into some difficulties there. A lot of times you, you get a picture of a, of a person or a, or a kid or whomever, a perpetrator, and that's all you have. Um, that being said, um, years ago we were having uh, a lot of trouble with um, graffiti or uh, uh, damage to our playground equipment at Jefferson right. Park, and the police department actually put up a camera, and though they couldn't identify the subjects from the photo, they were able to get an idea of the time of day and, and their, their patterns and they were able to catch stick it out yeah. so, so definitely yeah I think it's a good idea it's a good deterrent anyway right. I, right a good deterrent I'd be supportive of that and camera cameras obviously are getting much more high quality and I think the price is coming down but um, I mean that's what you hear conventional from a conventional wisdom stand but I just you've done a good job you know keeping these parks up to speed and then it's just very discouraging to everybody I mean including your you know the people who work for you when, when the the uh, when that vandalism takes place. That's so. It's just amazing how many parks we have. I just was at somebody's house over on Summit, and I didn't know there was a little right. pocket park in there. Yeah. They're everywhere. 
How many acres do we have? Like 464 acres? 424. 424 acres of park. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And how many acres is Havens? 60. That's the good <laughs> Actually, um, um, sports field. The uh, um, VA park, I think, oh. is 94. Okay. But we own all the way down there. Right. Yeah. It's a lot bigger than you think. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of wood wow. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Did we do anything with the restroom at Havens? I can't remember. Did we put anything? Nope. We, uh, we, we did the study session where we reviewed all the options and, mm -hmm. and the costs, and um, it was considered in the CIP last fall, but it was not included as in, in the CIP program. Can we look at it this year again? Of course. Okay. Mr. Grant, on um, participation, one of the goals under community amenities, um, increase youth participation in all city activities. And, you know, what I'm thinking are the recreation and sports programs. So, um, I mean, do you have a plan to track that in terms of, you know, the participation, you know, from year to year or month to month? Is there, do you have the wherewithal to do that? Yeah, we, okay. and, and I don't know if you had a chance to look at our annual report. I did, report I and, did which I thought was really good yeah and right they, they track participants in that we have a spreadsheet of, of all of our participants and all of our programs uh, whether it be softball baseball basketball or everything what I don't think I saw and maybe I'm mistaken because it's been a while since I read it was kind of a trend though I mean which you'd have to start kind of maybe 2018 but just to see comparing trends year to year I mean there was the data for 17 2017, but I was just looking to see if we could establish something where we could look at some trends. And, and um, when uh, we get into the recreation side, and Tabor Medill, as I said, he, he'll be able to speak much okay. better than that, at least from his time being here. That's true. That's because there right. are some definite trends. We, we've struggled. I, okay. I don't let Tabor speak. Okay, yeah, we've okay. struggled with, right. with, um, with girls, um, youth basketball, and, and some of the yeah. different sports. And, and we're, we're getting Jump better in some, okay. and some are a struggle. I jumped the gun a little bit, no, that's sorry. Okay. Um, an, an idea, uh, and I don't know if Pastor Mayor or not, just came to mind for baseball signups, basketball signups, soccer signups. I don't know if we spend a couple hundred bucks and buy just, just like political signs that people have. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, softball sign up. You put them in strategic places around town, it all of a sudden people see it because yeah. obviously. Put them in our parks. In the parks. But, you know, some people <laughs> gladly take one and put it in their yard. And make it generic enough, you can get these foam ones now that are weatherproof that you can use next year until they do wear out. I don't know if that's an idea. $1,000 would probably buy 200 signs of you know five different sports, 40 each, strategic places. Sure. Might get a few people think, but I don't know. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Just a thought. Sure. The other avenue we hope to at some point, um, I know you've all seen the digital sign that we've talked about going to Subby Park. Yeah, that's yeah. 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 yeah, that'd be good all too. Yeah. But yeah, those are any any ideas we can yeah, get, send, get we send flyers out obviously to, to every school to go home to the kids and, and I'm sure you deal with it all the time. Mr. Medill deals with it, you know, softball, baseball sign ups are due by May tenth and then right. somebody comes in and says, well, I didn't know anything about it and here it is June first and right. Right. Uh, and we're always gonna have that, but any way right. we can increase the exposure yeah. of that sign both signs. And, and that's why we, we did, we dropped the drop dead deadline. Where you, yeah. And we get, and, and, and we have kids come in, we're two, three, four weeks into the season. I know, I know. And, 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 <laughs> and, uh, they don't care the cost as long as they get to go out there and play. Yeah, okay. so, yeah. So, yeah. so that's good. And that's what we are. We're all inclusive. You know, but I need everybody out there playing. Reference that sign at Stubby Park. Is that, is that? It'll sure. come back at the CIP. It was funded at an amount that is not sufficient to build okay. the sign, sure. and, and the uh, commission probably needs to relook at that right. to make sure that they're still good with that placement. We'll look at the placement. We got about half of the funds, no essentially. Problem. So, okay. so we'll talk. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Go ahead. Yeah. I know it's a major project. Uh, we talked about in the past the Bob Doherty basketball court. Yes. Any plans on well, and we construction? Have and Brian, I can let Brian talk more on it, did some work as far as the CIP is concerned on that. Yeah, yeah, we filled the cracks as best we could with that. Um, we looked at a few different type of systems you could put on the court um, to help. And uh, we, we placed that in the CIP last year. Um, so we'll be placing that again in the CIP for this year. Um, there's a couple different systems and, and there's a, quite a bit of difference in 
handling costs sure. in the systems. Um, so we've we've looked at those a little bit. It is in the CIP for 2019. Oh, it's right. a, it, it is in the plan at, at about ninety thousand dollars. Did we not? Uh, didn't we replace that court completely about five years ago, or did we just have we always patched? I think they've always patched. Okay, okay. One, one and issue, I know there's a lot of cracks sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. One issue we see at Doherty Park, and it's really exclusive to Doherty Park in that area, is we have a lot of ground movement. Yeah, and right. I think there was some underground yeah. voids and caves in the past. Wow. Um, so caves. trains going by. Yeah, yeah that doesn't help. Uh, mm. I, I recall one day going oh, out yeah. to. Oh, wow. A lot of caves. I recall one day going out there to fix an irrigation leak, mm -hmm. and and the water line, one water line was here, and the other one was like that, where literally it had shifted six inches. They weren't even in line anymore. Oh, wow. And so it, it's it's crazy the movement, and I think that's a lot of it. This, this, and, and Brian got a couple of different ideas on systems, and this one, it's the higher dollar answer that's in the CIP, but it's the one that we feel probably well, longer, it would last longer, longer. And, that's longer. Be better. Right. and that's the key one that right. would last right. longer. Absolutely. Any other questions? Mr. Wilson? No. Appreciate you. Thanks, and we'll go right Thanks. to the river Thanks, Mr. Bailey. Oh, Thank you. Good seeing you. Oh, yeah, still here. I'm still here. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> He's in charge of Riverfront also. <laughs> I believe it's the next one. Um, yes. Just a, just a couple of modifications. Um, now, Riverfront Park, we're talking about the campground. Yeah, correct. 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 Um, and then versus the landing park. Correct. Yes. Yeah. It, 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 and it's easy for people to call I mean, it's on the riverfront, yeah. so it's easy to, to mistake that and call that riverfront park. So, uh, Charlie Jordan is our manager again down there this summer. He's in his fourth, third, fourth, something yeah. like that, and doing yeah. a good job. One big improvement that we had down there this year is we did put in an automatic gate mm -hmm. where it has a code, and only the campers get oh, the code. That's and good. I think I guess. they feel a lot more secure. Uh, about that. And we were able to do that with, with our line item, um, in-house um, budget line for, for the non-capital equipment that's in there. Okay. Um, we, changed the, we changed the code every week to every, be, two, weeks. every two weeks, so, so campers don't always have the code. It's real easy to do. Operates great. It closes, closes right behind. When, what hours is it closed? It's always, the gate's always closed. Oh, it is. Yeah. So if I drive down there now, I could not drive no, through it. Unless, you, have, unless you have the code. The code. Okay. And uh, it's really cut down on the traffic Good. going down Good. to the campground yeah. area. Okay. We still have a lot of traffic that comes in that uses the boat ramp and so forth. Mm -hmm. But as far as going down into the campground, it's it's helped tremendously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the campers feel a lot more secure. Yeah. yeah. And people just when did you put in, put that in? We put it in the spring. Right. Well... We paid, it, it didn't go in until spring, it came out of last year's money. Yeah. Um, they couldn't get in for a few reasons, that parts were on back order and, and uh, the ground was too hard for them to dig. But, okay. um, but we had it going by the time we opened on right. April 1st. And we, we continue to do April 1st through October 31st. I, I'm pretty sure you're all aware we've tried extended months in the past. We've had a little bit of inquiries every now and then about trying to stay open during the winter. Why don't you stay open during the winter? We tried that, and how many do we get in that month? Yeah. Zero. 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 We, yeah. yeah, from <laughs> November yeah. to month of November. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, Did the recent rise in the river affect the the yeah. park at all? Did no, we keep a close eye on that. We know exactly at what level it comes in, mm -hmm. and when it does come in, all it does is come across the lowest part of the roadway there, and that nature of flooding, there's no current. It's not like a flash flood, so it's not like somebody's going to get washed away. We do, um, once it's getting close, we have them move out. Uh, if they're self-contained in a completely self-contained unit, we welcome them to just pull up into the upper parking lot okay. and they can stay up there. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but, good. Yeah, but we don't want them traveling through water in and out, even though it's not current. So <laughs> but, we will move out. but we keep a close eye okay. on that. Good. I have it right on my desktop. I have a link right to the NOAA, that National Oceanic good. Atmosphere, or whatever. It did. Like, you did have close like 2013 is that our last flood year, 2012, whatever that was. 11 was the bad one. 11, whatever, yeah. but, but we, that yeah. did flood out then. Right. It, it can flood out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 we went about seven or eight years where it flooded out every other year. Yeah. Right there until about 2000. Yeah. Hmm. Other than that, operations are going well. Um, we've added a little bit to the budget for buildings, ground maintenance, repair. Um, and then if, um, the 
just never in there before. A lot of that was coming out of the parks. Okay. Budget. Um, other than that, also the park supplies too. Mm -hmm. We added in. Why did uh, just out of curiosity? Why did we reduce the budget in 2018 from 2017? Now 2019, we're going back to 2017 stand. Why did we on revenue? I think at the time we did that, we, it was just based on estimates that when it came in higher than what we had budgeted, we compensated for it this year just to increase it. And that estimated year for 2018, is that the Munis uh, mm -hmm. thing again? That yeah, why it's it's based yeah. on okay. actuals. Okay. Okay. okay, okay, thank you. And one, uh, the years we have closed down there are obviously a huge variable on that. Yeah. Uh, we lose a lot of revenue real quick. Questions? Yep. Mr. Moran. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, recreation next, Taylor. Page 55. Of course, recreation going hot and heavy, it being the, uh, the middle of summer. Um, we are uh, beginning to finish up our, our youth leagues uh, coming to an end. Uh, we uh, obviously had to fight the heat um, with some of those games. Where, uh, where we don't play when the heat, act, heat index is above 105, is that right? Correct. Yeah. Um, Does it stay that high past 6 o'clock in the last few weeks? We've lost two days, two days. because of it, and then made it up later. Yeah. And they will, if it's on the borderline, they will play the later games if it, okay. if it comes just down. Cancel 6 o'clock game or something like play that. Play at 7.30. Yep. Yeah. We've been very busy at a sports field. We've hosted uh, Midwest Sports Production uh, four times, four different tournaments out there. It worked out well. It's worked out really well. Good. Good. Um, they've even actually started. Um, Tabor has been hounding on them for a while. They're just using fields one and two for baseball. And we're trying to get the youth out there for the. They have rest of the fields. And we actually got them. Not only did they use all four fields in sports field this year, they also use the one out there on the corner that we call Sportsville 5. They were able to use that one also. They had five fields going for one oh, of their okay. tournaments. Good. So that was that was great. And then uh, next week, we're hosting the American Legion State Tournament. And that starts on Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday through Saturday, I think. Correct. Saturday. Hopefully not Sunday. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right now, so. Right. The other big uh, item in recreation that, that Tabor has taken on is the concessions. Uh, of course, we did concessions out at Cody and Sportsfield last year. Uh, Cody, found, we found that Cody was not worth it. It was cost prohibitive, just the lack of sales there. Um, Sportsfield, we're doing that again this year. And then Tabor has also taken over the uh, concessions at the Aquatic Center also. We thought it best to keep that all um, governed by one in one area. So, so Tabor's in charge of all of that. Is anybody doing concessions at Cody? No, sir. Okay. Yeah, we, we've done away with it. Just, there just wasn't anything there that we hoped. And y'all wouldn't be interested in taking it on contract? I, I doubt it, yeah. just because um, that's the first thing they would probably ask is how profitable is it. Yeah. You know? um, and we usually don't start until after people have eaten dinner. Yeah. So. It's mainly, it's all the adult leagues yeah. you know, out there. I know, I know my predecessor pushed for put, selling beer out there, and I think if, if we ever sold beer out there, which I don't know that we want to do that, but that would be the money. <laughs> yeah. Does the American Legion State Tournament, does that require a fee to get in? Um, or, or can like a not level? To of, us. Not, to, not to level more citizens? Correct. Okay. Um, where we charge MSP per game, per field, um, we don't get any of the fees, the entrance fee to come into uh, this, uh, to the fields. Um, we collect the admission for the state tournament and we get that money. So I think, I don't know that you guys are thinking, we're talking about the same thing. He was asking, <laughs> oh, if, if a level more citizen wanted to come out to the American Legion state tournament at sports field, they would pay it an admission, an admission fee. Admission, correct. Or whatever it is. Right. It's so. tough. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, for any city city league games, there is no admission. There is okay, no thing. But for a, a, a private tournament, okay. um, yeah, they are able to that's, charge a game. That's fine. Right. Yeah. Well, but in the private tournaments, we get a per game, per field fee that they pay. We don't collect the admission 
they collect the Yeah, but there isn't. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I got yeah, it. There, but there isn't. Right. I got it. Yeah. 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 And has it been pretty well publicized, do you think, in terms of this? I mean, do we do any? Is, it, that's, is that all on the on the back of the American Legion State Tournament to publicize that? Yes. Or do we do we do anything? Do we put it on our website or anything like that? Or just, um, just no, wondering? Not at this time, I don't believe. Okay. They, they do quite a bit. I think the new sports editor at the Times has been, been, yeah. been yeah. writing about it. Okay. His name? Luke. 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 Yeah. Peterson. Peterson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and he came to our last, uh, our previous, not this week, our previous yeah. park meeting. So as far as the, the operational budget itself, you will see a, a five thousand dollar shift um, from uh, increase in the part time help, and that's just moving money from the recreational services, which which would have been contractual hiring contract contractors, moving that instead of contracting out our concession workers, they're actually now city employees, part time city employees. That's just so that's just a shifting of money there, um, and then. We don't really know on the concessions and, and how much um, we'll be bringing in, so that that's kind of a wild card. Um, but I believe it's going extremely well with, with the weather. We've had a very, very busy summer at, at Walnut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. And concessions as well as uh, entry fees can be done on card. Yeah. Not, we haven't done the concessions. We have not done it yet on concessions. Um, okay. Yeah, we, we discussed that and, and and the newness of it to this point. We're getting comfortable with the concession operation, but we talked about maybe going there next there year. Been much of a problem is some parents come in and say, "I don't have any cash. I've got my card on, on concessions." Oh, are you asking? Have they? Yeah, and, and you know what became a problem. I know with entry fees. Right. On, you know, yeah. My mother or father come with two or three kids and. Of all their stuff, and I say it's eighteen dollars. Here's my card. Sorry, we can't take it. And that was frustrating. But concessions has you haven't heard, haven't got much. No, I think they're they're so used to it. But but I mean, let's not kid ourselves. We'll sell more if we take yeah. you know, if we take plastic. Right. Absolutely. Um, other than that, and just but, just very briefly, we yes. can't get into a lot of detail here. But just participation in terms of the challenge yes. and how we might, in a general sense, be. Trying to meet that challenge as far as increasing participation of the the youth in the in the sports. I think the biggest thing we're going to see help us is the fact that we can now, well, not yet, yeah. can register online. Okay. I think that's going to be a huge help. Okay. Um, the challenge is this day and age, the uh, competition, the right. competitive but, but, teams that yeah, travel, traveling teams, yeah. and um, I mean what they pay to travel is pretty astronomical but mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. that's taken away from our recreational programs yeah. um but the flip side of that is if we didn't have those traveling teams we mm -hmm. wouldn't be getting msp to come in on weekends so i mean it counterbalances the same number of kids <laughs> are participating in sports it's just where they're going are they going recreational or are they going competitive so What's the what's the age limit? I mean, is it like twelve or thirteen when they're transitioning, maybe from recreational youth sports to six the, years old? Oh, six. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, uh, It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, obviously, Mr. Griswold and I are the same age. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Bowder, <laughs> they didn't have women's sports back then. Right? No, we didn't. But you did play baseball <laughs> in in town to. Yeah. yeah. You know, there wasn't a high school team, so you played right. during mm -hmm. the summer through your yeah. senior year yeah. in high school. Now, once you're 10 or above, and Mr. Medill says six, but I know at least 10 or above, uh, if you're playing baseball, you have that interest, you're going on a traveling mm -hmm. team somewhere. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, city recs kind of consider, you know, <sighs> it, it's tough. I mean, they, that's the way it is. And they play baseball year round. They play. Yeah, uh, basketball, soccer, yeah. I don't I think know it's so right. much about football, but, you know. When we were growing up, we played. I mean, even though we couldn't play on the school teams, we played in state right. rec uh, yeah. all the time. I played basketball all my yeah. whole yeah. life. Yeah, they want, they, growing it's, up. It's a, the terminology is a feeder system, so that you're in the same system all the way through. And I think the new basketball coach at Lumberland High School is going to work with Steve, but he's interested in the same thing. So you start learning the offense, the players, the system, 
at six, seven, eight years old all the way through. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Yeah, you know, if we account for it and stuff like that, and we still have the recreational opportunities for maybe some, but uh, but I think it's going to become even more so yeah. um, with uh, how it's going. Yeah, I think the flip side of that is the kids can get burnt out, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Starting at six yeah, or seven. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you're already seeing that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you're seeing that. Uh, you know, the number of kids that are going to be in the NBA, Major League Baseball, Major League Soccer, there's like one or two per generation. As we know. Well, except for my son, of course. Yeah, he he'll be in the NBA. Except for yours, of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 You get the Wayne Simeons and someone That's else for the 20 years, 30 no. years ago. They, it doesn't happen that often. Yeah. Mr. Medill, how about um, attracting coaches? Is that still a challenge? Actually, we did really well, and I was really excited about the coaches we had in both basketball okay. and baseball and softball this summer. Um, mm -hmm. I hardly heard any complaints from umpires or referees, Good and that's a huge thing. That's a big thing. And um, the fact that we didn't means that they're relating pretty well with the kids. Good. And... If you relate well with the kids, the kids are going to come back next year. And that's been a problem okay. that we've encountered. Good. Um, but I would like to interject a couple of things, and that is that um, the women or the girls' numbers increased dramatically this year okay. uh, in both basketball and summer softball. Hmm. The one problem we did have is because. Um, which is a good thing, okay? So don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. Um, the fact that we don't have a drop down deadline, drop dead deadline, um, had we have had that, we could have had more teams because I like to keep the number of teams or players on a team around 12. Um, this year we ended up having like 15 on two different leagues sure. where I could have gone and sure. had an additional yeah. teams, yeah. Um, which is more playing time. But mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but it was interesting in the 11 to 14 age group this year, we actually had more girls than we did the boys playing uh, this summer. Okay. Yeah. So And then I also want to um, express my appreciation to two people specifically, well, families, two families, uh, Shelly Cannon and her husband Rocky and their two children, and... Um, Chief Kitchens and his wife and two children, uh, they actually ran, the Cannons ran the um, instructional softball for us, and the um, uh, Kitchens, Kitchens ran the instructional baseball. Oh, and cool. We had so many positive comments cool. from both of those programs this summer, great. so um, they did a great job. What was the name of the first family? Uh, Cannon. Cannon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shelly's on our uh, park and community activities advisory. Okay. okay, that's great. Great. We get a lot of questions about the instructional league because it's what you used to think of as t-ball. Oh, okay. People call it basking t-ball. And, and, and at first they're like, well, I just want my kid to play t-ball. But they get <laughs> so much more out of this where, you know, they're not just hitting the ball off of the tee and playing yeah. towards their face learning. and everybody's <laughs> laughing. They're, they're actually learning how to play the game. You don't use the tees anymore, do you? Or yes, we do. You still use the tee, okay. Um, pigtailing on something the mayor said um, about not being able to play, I think you said golf and tennis without <laughs> practicing well, or so lessons. You can't, but well, no, <laughs> well, you can't. Right. I mean, those are the, the two Sports that are needed. <laughs> That's something that just drives me crazy in America is that you say, I'm going to sign up and I'm going to play baseball or I'm going to sign up and play basketball. And you're supposed to be playing the game the first day you step out yeah, there. You don't know how to play. And yeah. we get them to the next level, and they don't have a clue where they're going. Yeah. And um, it was really fun to watch the progression that That's the good. kitchens and the cannons both used in it um, because they did nothing but drills for the first two weeks. And then the third week, there's, it's four weeks, the third week mm -hmm. they started a little introduction of, okay, now we're going to run the bases, or now we're going to do this. And by the fourth week, the kids actually knew where first base was. They didn't hit the ball or into third base, <laughs> yeah. you know. So uh, that's why we went away from uh, T-ball, was philosophically trying to get them to understand where first base is. I mean, literally.
Well, when Mark and I were growing up, you would have learned those on the sandlot, right? Yeah. I mean, or out yeah. in the street. But yes. now it's, it's you know, it's a, it's, yeah, it's, a, diff it's a different America. <laughs> but well, I have one last question in terms of how did the tennis tournament go? Um, very good. Very good. And um, we had good numbers. And now we've got the Labor Day tournament coming up, um, which is the first tournament was live in or um, Res residence and yeah. live and work in Leavenworth. The Labor Day is open to. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I was getting there. Some ringers that come in from right. Yeah. Right. But right. they may have a connection to Leavenworth, yeah. but they are ringers from out of town. There's some high quality tennis. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, esports. I don't know if, if you're familiar with esports, but esports is the biggest growing sport Video in views. America. And St. Mary College uh, just uh, yeah, they're considering they're considering bringing esports in as a varsity sport <laughs> Video at St. Mary College. I got one other question because it's the supposedly the fastest growing sport in the United States, pickleball. Um, I mean, I guess people who play pickleball go out on some of our in parks and on yeah. the tennis courts and things we like have that. It so at the community center, yeah, and we have it at Cody. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, for senior citizens, right? And morning time. Senior citizens. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> They play, Everybody, they, they not play just senior on, citizens yeah. play. Well, I thought they had like a certain time. No. <laughs> What's the definition of senior citizens? Anybody heard of one? 32. 31 years old. Yeah. Um, we also they, play at Fort Leavenworth with some of the soldiers up there, too. Yeah. So we play all ages. It's not just. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> not just senior citizens. There was citizens. a girl playing in there with them. Um, uh, Colonel Black was, was showing how to play the other day, and I'll bet she was 10. Yeah. It's probably a screen dollar or something. Yep. So, it is a fast-growing sport. Yeah, right. Genesis, yeah. too. It's yeah. fun. We have four courts at Cody okay. Outdoor, and then two of, two of them at the community center. Cool. Find out. Good. And they play every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon. So just kind of pick up. Good. Yep. Yeah. Still waiting for those for racquetball to come back so we can turn those racquetball <laughs> courts back into... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know. I, I, I don't know what happened. Right. There used to be a lot of people yeah. playing racquetball. Yeah, but I played it all the time. I did Oh, yeah. before yeah. Yeah. Every now and then, it turned um, into CrossFit. There's still somebody in there. Yeah. CrossFit gym. Yeah. Well, before yeah. racquetball, there was handball. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And we, we took it. Used to have to pay an extra two dollars. Now we just make it a. It's it's just part of your entry fee to the community center. Um, the racquetball courts. It used to be an additional. Yeah. Soccer too. Yeah. And they used to play squash out on post. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the old basketball league turned out. Good. Yeah. We had. I attempted. Yeah. <laughs> you you play. How many teams? He, first time? He, he, he signed the roster. He had a 48 inch vertical. So, how many teams were there for the adult? How many? I think two? there was eight. Really? Wow. I think, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. good. Yeah. Some good, good ball. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions, Mr. Medill, Mr. Grant? What do we have next? Aquatics. Aquatics. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll, I'll note on aquatics while um, Nancy's coming up, you'll see some funny looking numbers about uh, some budgets zeroed out or some budgets doubled. We combined aquatics, the Woman Aquatic Center and the indoor pool. We had separately tracked them, but there's really no reason to. They use the same lifeguards, um, so there was really no, no reason sense. to keep them, so, so we collapsed those into one aquatics budget. Um, okay, like, like I said earlier, uh, we were having a good year out at, out at Woolman. Um, had really good crowds out there, and we've only had to, uh, we only had to close the pool twice for um, uh, any uh, contamination. Uh, one was just a brief closure, one was a 24-hour closure. Uh, we have, we, uh, I think it's been a couple years now we've changed our operation on that when we do close or we are forced to close for that or for weather or whatever, we just, we give everybody in the complex a free pass to come back. Well, that's good. That that's way we good. don't talk about, well, I've only been here five minutes yeah. or I've been here five hours or whatever. And, and that's worked out, that's worked out well with, with few exceptions. That's a good idea. Um, we've uh, made a few improvements at the indoor pool. We built an office at, at the indoor pool down at the community center. Uh, and that will house our new aquatic manager, Connor Devin, who started with us in March. March. Um, he came from us, or came from Iowa, went to Iowa State, and, and came to us in March. And he's obviously been um, out at the Woolman most of the time, but but seems to be working out really well. And 
things seem to be going very well. Um, as you know, in the past we had uh, had some issues with lifeguards and some of the changes we made over the last couple of years was, and we've been able to fully staff both facilities, I don't want to say easily, but relatively easily um, and changing both the lifeguard pay. Um, but really the main one was, was lowering the age from 16 to 15. Um, most of the surrounding areas allow 15-year-old guards uh, and we would actually train them and run them through our our training courses at 15 and then they'd go work somewhere else because they couldn't work for us yet so, uh -huh. so as a father who has a 15 year old that's a lifeguard guy you know, yeah it's a great thing it's her first job so uh, so that's helped out tremendously and then I think we bumped up uh, the pay for all those last year um, a little bit too that'd be more more competitive we pay the same eight dollars and 25 cents and that's the same as, as Lansing yeah, we bumped up against Schlitterbahn a couple times. Yeah. We bumped up against the Ford a little bit. So, you know, you don't think you have to be competitive for 15 and 16 year olds, but you absolutely do. Or you yeah. end up, like we had a couple years ago, we had a lifeguard shortage. Um, and we had to close certain areas of the pool. You know, slides would be yeah, closed or something like that. that. But we've done really well good. with some minor modifications. Good. That's good. And, and if you ever hear, well, my son or daughter works at Schlitterbahn as a lifeguard and they, they only get paid $7 an hour. Well, what, what they don't tell you is there's there's shallow water certifications and there's not it's not oh. for life. So if somebody's working the lazy river down at the Schlitterbahn <laughs> or somewhere, they, they have much less restrictions than somebody who's working all of the stations at an aquatic center like we have. So if you ever Makes hear anything sense. like that, there's a, there is a variation in that. Okay. Um, there are some additional monies that we've that have been added into the line items, basically dealing with with maintenance um, and. All of a sudden, our brand new Woolman Aquatic Center is in its 15th year, which is hard to believe. 15th yeah. year of operation. Um, so with that, with all of the backflow preventers and pumps and chlorinators, you know, there's just we've seen over the past three, four, five years, uh, you know, some, one, something goes out here, something goes out there, and we haven't necessarily budgeted for that in the past, just because it's been a new facility. So we've added some in that, uh, as well as as well as the, um, the monies that it costs for you know, the licensed person, whether it be a licensed plumber or whoever to put it in. Um, other than that, um, Nancy, unless you have anything to add, any, all of the questions you may have regarding aquatics. The cost of chemicals going up apparently, or, or just just more? We're using more. Well, because now, now remember, this is the cons consolidation of two. Oh, I got two, it. I got it. Yeah. I got so it. when you right. see that, it, 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 they're the yeah, same that's... chemicals, but now they're in Okay. Yeah. Both things. Right. Yeah. Is it still a challenge to find a security guard out there in Walmans? It is. Yeah. We. Um, I don't think we had an applicant. We had one candidate we interviewed. And that's it. One application. Yeah. That being said, we have several returning guards that are in their third, fourth, and fifth seasons, head guards, um, that are do a great job of, of you know, once, once they've been there a few years and they get to be 19, 20, 21 years old, they feel a little more secure and, and you know, once you get that time to develop, it, you know, keep things a little better. So how's the overall decorum been out there? I mean, I know you're not the police chief, but how's the overall decorum been of the patrons? I, overall, I, we haven't had a lot of complaints. I'll let Nancy touch on that. Um, I don't know. We occasionally have people that come out there and just hang out, and they're not even going to pull. Yeah, um, I, I think we haven't called police as nearly as much as last year. Um, and I think one of the uh, one of the changes or one of the things that's different, is, as Steve was just talking about, we have returning staff. They have an incentive to want to come back, so they come back. So they're a good summer job now. Um, the, like the head guards and assistant manager t are taking more of that role of, of walking around the facility and kind of keeping an eye, a, a lookout for those kind of trouble areas that we would have had um, our security guard take a look, you know, watch for. So I think that's really helped us a lot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think one thing Nancy and I have talked about I'm looking at in the CIP is, is some additional cameras. When when the, the aquatic center was first constructed, there there is a there's a security system out there that, that consists of five, is that right? Five cameras? Five cameras. And they were they're designed for security basically of the building and at night and at, at the structure itself. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. But and not, not really so much pool. as to the goings on throughout the day. Um, so we may look for additional so so when you get when you get you know, patrons that are fighting or whatever, it, it, you know, police can review the tape and see 
see who the instigators are, and you, you get away from a lot of the he said, she said stuff, and I think it'll help out operational. We, we've done that at the community center, um, in the gymnasium, and places like that where we've had fighting issues or, you know, patrons, um, and, and that's helped out a lot there. There's also, you know, there's theft that occurs, which occurs everywhere, and, and doesn't mean you'll, you'll catch something like that on tape, but just, you know, you can review things like that. So that's something that you might see. Um, um, also, as well, comes the IV time. Okay. I think I think it would benefit the, the every, you know, all the patrons that go there. Walk Mr. Bailey through there once a week or something. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just you know, with the baton, just. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that would be the ultimate if we could get some retired police officers or somebody, and you know, just to put in any hours throughout the week. And, yeah. uh, that, that would be nice. But, but like I said, it, so you know, it's been going fairly fairly well. Any questions for aquatics? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. Performing arts next. Is it performing arts? Yes, yep. and uh, Ron Mazia, the vice president of the Brewer City Community Players, is here. I'll just uh, hey, Ron. Hey, Ron. touch real quickly on uh, on the PAC itself. As I mentioned earlier, we're, we're in, starting our third phase of the HVAC third and final phase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Dealing with some of the air handlers, the air handling systems, some, some things that need to be brought up to code, uh, as well as um, getting uh, fresh air to the, the office on the southeast corner of the building. It currently has no heat or air conditioning, to it, so that will be involved in that also. First two phases, the, the air conditioning and the boiler, everything seems to seems to be running really well. To another Metro Plus. Yeah, we had, we had that power outage downtown a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and that tripped the breaker there. Huh. Um, they were having rehearsals in there, and it wasn't cooling like and it was a breaker. So that's a good one. Yeah. Um, with that, I think the shows are shows are doing really well. Um, and I'll let Ron touch on any any of those if you'd like. We have, uh, for those that haven't been down there, we do two musical shows, one in January, one in, well, audition in January shows the last week, February, first two weeks of March. The next show, which is uh, coming up in uh, Oklahoma, will open up the 27th of July and then run through the 12th of uh, August. We took our non-musical shows, took them down to two weeks each as opposed to three weeks. We lost one show, so we do Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they open up as soon as the other one closes, the all-star auditions. We have two youth shows, a non-musical and a musical, that will roll in between gathering those, along with the jazz festival, jazz, performing jazz teams we have. We usually, we tried initially with four <clears throat> times a year. We couldn't make it work. Uh, one of them came up during Mar March Madness. Um, Julie yeah. was uh, the director, and she says, I'll never do that again. Yeah. March Madness and Jazz don't mix, uh, mm -hmm. so we've gone to the spring and the fall. And we have a youth uh, Christmas show. Uh, it used to be called Spirit of Christmas. We've gone away from that after 40-some-odd years. Uh, we've moved to a, another one that's still oriented on the youth. And uh, basically, mm -hmm. anyone, any child comes in, they want to have a talking part. They sit down and write up a, a, a line or something for that child to say. And then mom and dad and all the grandparents come flocking in. Have a good time with that. That is probably the most challenging show that we have to put on, is because you're trying to corral cats. You know, hurting kids is like hurting cats, and uh, getting them in the, and getting them to be uh, stable for you know sit and be quiet for more than five seconds. So, but we we do well. Uh, we've uh, this last year, I think we turned uh, off of shows uh, about thirteen thousand dollars above the cost of the show. And that's not counting what we have for patrons right now. We have about 125, 120, I think, patrons that pay for the course of the whole year, whether they show up the show or not. We they've already paid their money, and most of them are just supporting the arts. Sure. Our biggest uh, feature is the the walk up. The people who just walk in and say, "I want to come and buy a show," but we do lose the same as Steve said about we don't take credit cards. Uh, and we're trying to work through that, but uh, that we lose we'll lose two or three per show. Can we just have an iPad with a square? Yeah. yeah. I mean, is it that? that uh, our uh, my dog rumor does that. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> I got one on my phone. I, oh, you know. I wasn't. I was talking to the rumor, not yeah. the, yeah. the play. Yeah. But I don't. But I don't, yeah. There, there's some legalities because we're not we're not city employees. We can't have one of those because we're not bonded. Yet I can take 
hundred dollars, hundred dollars worth of cash. I'm still not bonded and turn cash and, and checks over to the city. We got to look so, into that. It's, 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 it's been an ongoing battle. Track, we'll it's been an ongoing on. drill. Yeah. We got the onlines working. Uh, How but much is a walk-up ticket for Oklahoma? Um, he would be ten dollars. Uh, you would probably be ten dollars because you're probably in the in the over 60, 62 age. Uh, <laughs> you're, tw you're twelve. <laughs> With all the hotels and everybody downtown, yeah. people yeah. would just and drop and in get, and they all carry credit. We do get people credit. coming up. Sure. Yeah. 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 Military is $10, groups of eight or more are $10, students are $10, <laughs> uh, I think small children are 7 but it's uh, it's not yeah. nice. It's a fair price. It's not what you're going to get. To, if you go up to Atchison, you're going to pay $24 to go yeah. see one of their shows. Oh, wow. The quality of your shows is really super yeah. good. Yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah. So how do you get the word out? I mean, uh, We have a, 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 a people sign up on a, a registered email list with us that we do not share with anyone, and they, they feel comfortable with that. We send it out as, as courtesy copy emails, so we, they never know who's sending the email other than our CCP. Uh, that we've got uh, internet uh, rccplv.com. Okay. There's a website that we okay. we put out. Uh, word of mouth, get out to the students and kids. Uh, Anything on Facebook or we've got Facebook. Okay. Uh, we've got a uh, okay. the brochure. Trying to work on on uh, Twitter and whatever the other one is. Uh, Instagram and stuff like that. Do you take anything down to the hotels? I, mean, I can see plenty of people. Uh, just walking I don't out. know that they have done that one yet. Uh, I know we have it posted on the, the scrolls at the banks when yeah. we have a show coming up. Yeah. You'll, but the, you know, uh, I'm at the Hamptons, two blocks. I'm at particularly yeah, they've got the Hilton, yeah. Yeah. two yeah. blocks. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't know that that's been done and since they, they opened up in the last couple of years. Yeah. I, I just haven't looked at that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely go yeah. after it. Any other questions for performing arts? Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Good seeing you. Uh, community Center is last but not least. Tammy Nutters, our Community Center Manager, um, does a fantastic job. I, I, we get nothing but compliments about the, the staff and obviously the building. You know, it's, it's a fantastic venue, and uh, Tammy does an excellent job of not only booking rooms, but then taking care of the customers, you know, whatever their needs are. Um, and then we've also got a great maintenance staff uh, with our maintenance supervisor, Chuck Phillips. Uh, I, I, think the, I think the building looks better than it's, than it's than it has in a long time. Just some of the deep cleaning that he's into with the floors that, that, that you see down there. Um, it's really looking, really looking nice. As I said, the, the new flat roof is um, is will be completed here um, in, in short order, and then um, I'm sure you're all aware. In 2019, there's another phase of the stone replacement. Yes. Um, that will not affect our front entrance at all this time around, which we're very grateful <laughs> about. It will, however, uh, have a, gr a big effect on the south wing, the senior area down there. Um, so that's going to limit. Um, the usage of that room will be able to move a lot of the things that we do in the south wing into the men's waiting room there um, as long as they're able to keep access open to the, the restroom and kitchen area which I think they've indicated they're, they're uh, going to be able to and we're of course working closely with the um, engineering department uh, on all of that. Uh, other than that, um, uh, Terry Booker continues to be our, our caterer down there. Um, does a fantastic job, um, you know, no complaints about him. Um, room rentals are, are, are going well. Um, we've seen an influx in the rental of, of the gymnasium. We've had a couple of those MMA events down there with, with zero issues um, yeah. and, and great attendance. Um, really, uh, really the, the thing we're looking for to increase as we go forward whether it be next year or whereas in the future is, is more dollars where we can put more time into maintenance of the facility just just in an in-house thing that you don't think of um, in a what's that 75,000 square 53,000 53, square feet I must add it to Jim. <laughs> are the rates for renting the rooms and, and uh, obtaining the services uh, still attracting a um, good number of groups and Individuals, I mean, absolutely. I don't think anyone can beat our prices. 
Right, and in terms of, so that's been pretty consistent. I mean, you've got, you're full a lot of the time. I mean, yeah. right? I mean, it seems like you are. But. We are, yes. We stay very busy. Yeah, I think um, generally speaking, like Tammy said, um, our prices are, nobody can, nobody can touch us on our prices. And, and I think we're, I think we're fine right where we're at with that. Um, I think that's where we want to be. Yes. Good. Questions on community center? No, I, I think Tammy's great. I think Chuck is just great too. Yeah. I really, and he's always there reading, ready to help out. Every time you see him, he's got a smile and that really goes a long way, so, you know, for right. yeah. employees. Yeah, they're doing a great job, so. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you Thank Tuesday you. morning. <laughs> so that's the last of all of the uh, individual areas. And if there's any general questions that I might try and answer, or, like, no, took good. longer than my time. Yeah. And that was a great report you put out earlier. Yes, too. Thank you. Yes. Andrew. I'll tell you what, it's, um, you're only as good as your staff, and I got a fantastic staff, and they did a, they did a great job. Mm -hmm. That's as simple as that. Thank yeah. you, Steve, for what you did. All right. Thank you, Ms. Brown. All right, thank you very much. Uh, you want five minutes, okay? Yeah. Five minutes. Five. Yeah, thank you.
so it's, it's made it in the budget. We greatly uh, appreciate that recommendation. Uh, staffing has been uh, relatively stable for a change, yes, yes. and uh, we do have uh, some uh, veterans and quite a few new people, which is uh, which is good to, to get new folks to ask questions. Uh, so uh, if you can't explain it to them, maybe you ought to think about what it is that you're doing. Uh, so that's uh, that's that's worked well. I don't know there's uh, any highlights. So they, they learned to scramble in front of us in engineering. We dream up new things for them to do. Uh, they need to patch the potholes and crack seal in front of the granite seal operation. Uh, that was a scheduling uh, maze and. A, then we said, oh, and by the way, we're in charge of watering the grass down there on Three Mile Creek. And uh, seeding. And seeded, too, because that uh, for some reason the seeding wasn't in the contract, so they got to get out there over the edge and do the seeding, and they watered every day. Anybody fall down? No, we had a lot of this in We were ready for the test. You really weren't on the We really did. Yeah. No. I'm sure how excited. <laughs> Another fun, new, and exciting thing they do is with the uh, hard stormwater uh, facilities that we've constructed over the last few years, the, the, the domes for the, the decreased uh, release rate into the storm sewer system, they tend to get some leaves and debris in them, some more than others. We're learning as we go, but the, the stormwater crew has learned that they get to go to these places and clean the crud out of the inlets, particularly up on uh, Mike Ottawa and uh, Cape Poo. Do that. Uh, hindsight is a pretty useful tool. Uh, they work fine, but you got to keep clean. A good example of that is the new parking lot downtown. There's a drain structure in there, and they're bio friendly and, and all that kind of stuff, but they do require a lot of maintenance. So, as we go to these and upgrade our storm water runoff in quantity and quality, it does require more maintenance um, to keep those systems up and running and ready to function properly. It's not rocket science, but it is uh, time that they, they spend. But, but under uh, Curtis, uh, like I said, the streets, uh, streets is doing uh, a lot of focus work, working uh, on their own set of projects as well as under direction from engineering to coordinate with our projects. So a fine job. I just want to commend you on those potholes. <laughs> I will. I will recognize Becky Peterson as well. She's on the streets. She's in charge of specifically for potholes. Yeah. And it was a particularly tough season, right, this year because of the variations in temperature exactly day to day, if not exactly week to week. Right. You have to catch it when you can. Yes. That's good. So this is streets and alleys that we're yeah. if we're if, if we're going. Right. In general, there's a lot of territory, but for focusing on, streets. on streets, okay. streets and alleys, uh, uh, it's kind of what I've uh, been focused on here for the last few minutes, but there's plenty of other territory to talk about. What, tell us about alleys. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. yeah. Uh, alleys uh, receive uh, limited, is probably the kindest way to put it, a maintenance by the city. Uh, the, uh, if there is a rough spot in an alley, that really isn't something that we feel compelled that we should run out and repair. If there's a pothole that your car bottoms out in, we want to know about those and we will, we will fix them. Uh, a number of years ago, probably going on almost 20 at this point, maybe longer, the city made an effort to pave all of the alleys that were gravel. It was a constant battle every time it rained. The gravel would wash out, so after every rainstorm, you'd spend the next two weeks going back and pushing all the gravel back up in the alleys. So time and circumstances were right. There was a lot of uh, cheap asphalt, and the city had the resources. We paid to the best of our ability every alley we could find in town. Uh, though that paving is starting to show its age. So you get potholes now in the asphalt. that The asphalt was there to keep the gravel from washing down. Um, we do not have uh, an aggressive alley maintenance policy. Uh, if there's trees or bushes that are overhanging, we uh, refer those as property owner responsibility. If it's interfering with our ability to go do our job with the sewer truck or street repair vehicle up the alley, we'll trim limbs on the street or in the alley that are in our way. Uh, but those normally are property owner responsibility. Uh, there's no organized alley maintenance uh, 
unless it's part of uh, some other project like the uh, uh, sewer infiltration project. We like tore alleys completely from front to back and then we repave those. There's a big difference between alley maintenance out in the community and alley maintenance downtown. Yeah. The biggest issue with alley maintenance downtown is what effect does it have on stormwater? Um, a lot of times people think you can just put asphalt over that, but if it's not done correctly, you can change the drainage patterns in a way that could affect business owners quickly and severely. So um, those are two kind of different considerations. Those are challenging downtown. Absolutely. Yes, sir. You well, and some of the alleys in the residential are so bad that you can't yeah. even travel down. If, if there's an alley that... If there's an alley that is essentially impassable, we'll let us know. We'll take a look at it. We may be able to do some repairs. But there are also alleys that are grass. Uh, yeah. That we don't do yeah. anything with those. It's almost like they're part of the house. And that's what I wondered, if they were really part of the city or part of the property owner. If it's not, if it's not as they say, improved, then the property owner is responsible to maintain the grass to the center of the alley, much like... They maintain their front yards to the back of the curb or the edge of the pavement. Okay. But if they're rocked and... If, if the city has an improvement in the alley, then the property owner is responsible for the edge of the improvement, and the city would be responsible to maintain okay. some passable level. But if it's... Well, we've had people with vegetable gardens in the middle of the alleys, and their neighbors want to drive through the vegetable garden down to the other, their driveway. I was thinking of the one near the one near behind Bob Hatswell because I take it quite a bit and I just pull in there and behind his house it's pretty smooth and you get on past it and it's like a drop off where it goes like this and you can barely get through. I just I just wondered about that if it was the owners and I didn't ask Bobby if he would know I guess <laughs> but but I just didn't um, but if wonder how that works. If it's a gravel alley that your car is bottoming out on, we can take a look at that and uh, patch or repair it. I mean, from the downtown, if there's really a problem, we're going to, you're going to get, we're going to get, the city will get a call, right, from some of the, maybe some of the store owners or, or, or not? Typically, you'll get a call from, <laughs> yeah. right, from the businesses downtown because we told them we won't do anything. And then it's, there's usually a reason for that as, as city manager said, well, the, the, you're changing the, the drainage stuff. or, uh, it, it is what we patched it, and that's as good as it's going to get. That type of that type of a, a deal, we don't mill and overlay them right. and make them all shiny nice. The other thing we don't do that costs a lot of public out sometimes is we don't move snow from alleys. Um, and so sometimes downtown, especially with lofts, if your entrance is off an alley, um, then you can. But there's really no conceivable way to effectively move snow out of a lot of those alleys. That's correct. There's no way to put it. Any other questions? Yeah. Comments? Traffic control? There's, there's, there's uh, about 50 signalized intersections uh, in Leavenworth. And how many school crossings? About 10 or 12. 12. Uh, that uh, are maintained by our traffic control department of one. He gets a helper from time to time from either other employees or occasionally uh, uh, inmate uh, worker. But uh, it's pretty busy. It's a pretty technical field anymore. I think uh, it's, uh, he's busy all the time. And then there's, uh, uh, we did this big initiative on upgrading stop signs, uh, kind of working through our GIS. And that is, uh, uh, that was really interesting. Uh, we do all this work getting all this information and you actually get to kind of use it for something that target your your effort it, it was it was fairly uh, uh, rewarding to see that happen uh, there's uh, money for uh, additional street name signs we've talked about how we can best implement kind of standardized street sign program uh, I to buy them pre-made or uh, if we're going to make them ourselves but uh, I'm really leaning toward uh, ordering them pre-made just because of the the people, the time it takes to make them. I, I neglected, I'm sorry, I neglected to mention that in my budget wrap up, our budget uh, preview the other night. We did also, we did the 10,000 for court uh, authorized wide abatement, we did 10,000 for parking amenities, and we also added uh, $10,000 extra for new signs. I know oh, that good. was a discussion that the commission had during goal setting, mm -hmm. and I've talked to individual commissioners about. Um, okay. 
and the value of adding that is we probably do need to order them pre-made because our one person sign shop also makes signs too so um, installation maybe we can pull some people in and some other winter months or something like that to install it. we've added ten thousand dollars for signs you know, for street signs and things yeah yeah so we'll, yeah. we'll kind of Good. bring back uh, uh, what we believe would be a, an appropriate size and color and text font and make sure we're all in line with that and send it to the city manager for distribution to, and probably focus on uh, the collector on Ontario streets uh, our goal have the, the, the practice is if it is two residential streets intersecting you don't have one pair of street name signs at the intersection one for each street they're generally going to be together and they'll be on a stop sign if it is a uh, any street uh, that intersects with a collector in arterial street you will have uh, two sets of signs uh, and then it just gets worse because each time you have a sign we're set up where it's two signs it's uh, written on this side of this sign and this side of that sign so you take two of them like a sandwich so you kind of double the, the number of signs for the system of signs that we're using we may find a way to reduce that but my staff convinced me that two signs is uh, per it. not just two street name signs in it with four physical signs mm -hmm. at yeah. one intersection never, I never knew the math was so uh, yeah. Yeah. complicated yeah. for uh, street I, signs but I, I, challenge, <laughs> I challenged them to show me and they did so, no problem so that's uh, uh, that's the direction uh, that, that we're headed and we have uh, tried to get uh, our traffic uh, traffic tech we've took into a meeting at Minimac or a regional council of kind of a discussion of traffic control issues really signalization a lot of it is way beyond what we do but the key part was they all suffer with the same types of problems that we have and he was able to do some uh, networking with people to get advice on the types of problems that we have uh, with, without having to, to reinvent the wheel uh, just remind me, I know we changed this a few years ago. Uh, at what times does 4th and 7th uh, Street <laughs> go flashing north and south? I honestly don't recall. But at night? Yes. Yeah, it does nine. nine till what? 6 a.m.? 7. 7. 9 to 7. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the, the thing. 4th and Spruce is a little different. No, yeah, well, I don't think we do 4th yeah. and Spruce. I think we just do 4th yeah. uh, from downtown, from okay. Cherokee. Yeah. through uh, Shawnee, yeah, for, I believe. Yeah, 4th and Spruce flashes also, but I think it goes oh, yeah. back to operations an hour earlier. I think if, if downtown's back in red, yellow, green, uh, on seven. seven, I think 4th and Spruce is at 6. Okay, okay. And 7th is uh, at uh, nine, six. 9 to 7. 9 to 7. I think it might be 10 to 7. It's 10. It's 10. 5th yeah. and Spruce also seven. flashes. Yeah, 5th yeah. yeah. okay. and Spruce. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? Streets? No. Oh, so storm sewers, but maybe it on signs or traffic. Right. Uh, storm sewer? Storm sewer is uh, funded uh, from the wastewater budget, but it's operationally under uh, Curtis, and they effectively work for Becky Beaver, who's the foreman out there. They're similar to a lot of work that the regular street crews do, but it's a crew of two people and some equipment that is uh, is theirs. They focus on stormwater, uh, minor repairs, so occasionally rebuild uh, inlets and things. They go around after the rain. Yeah, it's on page 69 in case you're confused. 77, 77 is the new stormwater utility. Oh, okay. The 69 is storm sewer. Right. Okay. right. Okay. The, uh, but their, uh, their goal was minor maintenance, remove debris from inlets, uh, check for obstructions uh, that you can't see from the roadway. We have known problem areas. They go inspect that for debris that's, that's floated in or been tossed in, uh, either accidentally or on purpose. Sometimes uh, residents don't like the kids' toys falling down into the inlets, so they'll put little barricades in front of the inlets so the, the baseballs and tennis balls don't go down in them, which is fine until it rains. And it rains hard enough, fast enough, that there's no getting out there and, and opening the inlet, especially if you're out of town when it happens. So, 
we try to uh, let folks know that it's not appropriate. And after they've seen a couple rainstorms, I think they end up. You know, sometimes they're doing work on roads. Uh, they put these you know, not sandbags, but socks, socks, and that and that's to prevent all the dust and concrete from going down. Correct. Or, yes, that's uh, uh, they're called gutter buddies or straw waddles or that sort of yeah. thing, and that's the requirement of the contractors to prevent the dirt and debris from entering the stormwater system. And uh, that's been a requirement for many, many years uh, that we've enforced sporadically, although we have been enforced very aggressively the last two to three years. Uh, and brings us in line with all the other communities in the greater Kansas City area. Well, okay. And it looks like it might be a little safer too. I noticed that at uh, Eagles Park, the where that square thing is there in the storm sewer where it goes down it's the bags i mean before i i worried about kids and animals getting down mm -hmm. in there especially little kids that are out there when they're playing ball and stuff messing around those things and i wondered if there's any way they could i don't suppose you could because it, you, you know you're trying to wash things away but if you could put a wire screen around there but that would that would defeat the purpose, wouldn't it? Right. That's that's the the trade-off. Is if it's small enough to catch the ball, uh, it's large. It's small enough to catch the leaves and the limbs and the. This looks like it's large enough to catch a kid. That was my concern. Yeah, it's fortunately you know, we haven't had that happen, but uh, they are <coughs> big. They are big openings. Yes, they are. And there are a lot of kids that play there, especially now that that field is. Fixed up, right up the right up the hill. Well, we can uh, look. I can do some research and see if there's anything available. Yeah, let's like if all safe parents put a light. Well, it does, but still, I mean, you know, kids. I mean, there's kids, kids, kids all over the place. Kids are gonna be kids. Yeah. But if you get in there, it might be difficult to get out. Well, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I do have a question about, uh, I don't know if it's storm sewers, but uh, last week when the river was so high, we had the water come up right on that, on the bridge roll in the city of uh, Three Mile Creek Walk. So does that, does um, some permanent damage happen when that, when that happens as far as the water or how, I mean. The, the was this the walkway under the railroad track? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was designed with every expectation okay. that that would happen and. That's parks departments to open and close, but uh, they, uh, they they clean it off, and it's been there for what well, since the early '90s, and there's no. Okay. It's been inspected as, as our, with our bridge inspection program every two years. There's never been a problem. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Move to garage or. Uh, we could we could hit seventy seven, which is this new stormwater yeah. fee. Uh, there's a there's a budget number on there, but we haven't done anything yet. We don't have any experience on that, so it's uh, just now it just shows as a as a budget. Okay. So um, the full time on that is a portion of the GIS. We we're adding a GIS person who will do all of the stormwater uh, fee, and, and we shared that cost. That's not the full cost of, uh, but it's about seventy five percent. We share that with the engineering budget. Um, and then again, this fall, as we've said, we'll, we'll be showing the commission our plan. Uh, we'll start getting funds uh, at the beginning of the year. So the first projects you won't see on that are until spring. Uh, okay. But we'll be sharing that this fall with the commission as we go forward. And that's not your budget, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> City operates uh, Central Garage out at the service center. Uh, there is a, a master mechanic and two regular mechanics and a clerical parts station person. Uh, record keeping, we do have a, uh, a fairly uh, modern setup. I won't say it's cutting edge, but it's much more modern than it was uh, say five or six years ago increases in uh, the diagnostic tools and access to the computer uh, troubleshooting help. 
they maintain everything from uh, really uh, the small pickups up to trash trucks and, uh, and other heavy equipment that we have. So there's a, there's a broad range of opportunities for people to, uh, to learn new skills, I guess. Uh, they, uh, they charge for their time. It's, it's billed back to the departments. So if you look at the other departments, uh, they have a vehicle maintenance budget. That's all essentially run through the garage. Uh, and uh, pays the garage. Uh, attempt for years and years was uh, uh, as a revenue fund, or, or I guess it, it, internal services fund is the correct term. Uh, and uh, it's been a pretty effective way, I think, to get things uh, to get things worked on. If they are overwhelmed with work, or if there is a project that they're uh, not able to take on because of its complexity or size, uh, they can send it out to for outside. We take full advantage of warranty work. Uh, many of the vehicles that we buy have factory warranties that are uh, really quite lengthy, often uh, two years or three years or more. There's a module in the computer system to keep track of that. So they got a transmission problem, and it says, well, you, you bought this thing you know, 21 months ago. It should still be under warranty. So you contact the dealer and go on with that. Uh, I think it's been pretty stable down there for... Yeah. About a year or so. I think you hit on it earlier. The challenge that I noticed throughout the service center and through the garage is as times change, you need to upgrade. So when the equipment comes in order, you have more diagnostic, therefore you have to cross train and upgrade with the equipment as it develops as well. So as Mr. McDonald spoke on, we're keeping up with the times. We're doing pretty good with that. Yeah. And we work with Ruby to try to get the budget and line items that reflect reality. Uh, sometimes it, it just costs a lot of money to work on some of this stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, budgeting low and hoping really isn't a rational way to, to run a railroad, I guess. But, uh, we think we've diagnosed where a lot of our costs for uh, uh, coming from on particular types of engines and transmissions on the large trucks, and we're avoiding them in new purchases. And, trying to buy efficient, effective vehicles that meet our needs. Mm -hmm. Mr. Morris, how many mechanics? We have three mechanics. We have a master mechanic and two mechanics. And do they periodically have an opportunity to get um, if they need it, like take some training to keep up with the... Uh, we do additional training on the outside, and we also do thorough cross-training on the inside. And we, we encourage our uh, master mechanic to participate in American Public Works Association. There's a like a garage managers group that gets together periodically. I said, don't go to every meeting, but try to get down there once in a while so you can get some exposure to what others are doing similarly. Once again, you can build up a network of network people. Uh, yes. If you have a problem, they've got the same truck or they got the same motor. Right. Can you help me figure out what this problem is? On high use vehicles, and I'm thinking specifically police cars, but you know some parts and rent vehicles too. Police cars are running 24 7. Uh, is there a routine maintenance schedule like every 30,000 miles? They get, yes. they get brakes. In our fleet uh, maintenance I program. I the brakes don't buy us right. maybe 30,000 miles. Within our fleet maintenance program, it's pretty thorough when we do our preventive maintenance. We okay. go through everything and we're. And it's like clockwork. The, so it's like that. It's not like, oh, these brakes are squeaking. Right. We don't wait till. Yeah. You go we're we're feeling when we're not. Yeah. We don't wait till the problem. What is the police car? Does it make 30,000 on a set of brakes, front brakes? Well, I'm not sure. I don't think so, but I don't know. How, how much should we drive? Nothing in town. <laughs> Nothing but in town, how long will your brakes last? It depends front. how you stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you're a 28 year old cop. How are you going to stop? How fast are you going to stop? Yeah, 30,000, 25 to 30. Yeah. Okay. But they, they do, uh, we've worked with. Uh, particularly the police department with other departments, uh, stressing with them how important it is they get their vehicles turned in. If you send them a notice that you're, you're you, we track the mileage of the vehicle when they get gas, so we're seeing them regularly, and that sets up, a, says it's been 3,000 miles since you were here last, it's time. And there was a tendency in the past that those would often get ignored and you know, we're not going to go out and arrest them for not bringing their car in, but if you talk to the right supervisors in the right order, uh, they, they will make sure that the... Well, with the size of our fleet that we have at the police department down there, don't run 24-7. No, that'll take...
think so. They, they do get used constantly, but I, I don't think they're hot, hot seat, no. Any other questions here in the garage? This is uh, a budget that's set up to operate the service center with uh, utilities, uh, maintenance of so, you know, lights or the electric system or upgrade the phone system or whatever that type of thing is. We needed to, the, the parks department uh, operational is out there along with the, the streets and the garage and refuse and everybody else. And so there's multiple types of accounts. At one time, if the garage is an internal services fund, the streets was a uh, uh, was attempting to be a, a revenue fund or at least self-sufficient from tax revenue. And then you have general fund, parks department. Uh, there was a whole mishmash of accounts and how do you pay for things. It was determined it was best to set it up as a single site and put somebody in charge and Curtis inherited that as part of his job as building uh, building manager and everything from squeaky doors leaky skylights uh, fire alarm system uh, the uh, defibrillator batteries are dead uh, needs paint we had a water leak we need new uh, carpet uh, all of that comes through this budget how is the service center Ninety-three, ninety-two, ninety-three. So that's our. About twenty-five years. That was uh, interesting stories to go into that, but that was the city taking advantage of an opportunity that unexpectedly presented itself when the, uh, the, the oh gosh, the Missouri Valley Steel yeah. Yeah. Uh, went uh, went out yeah. of business. The city had the opportunity to buy the property. Uh, it wasn't budgeted, it wasn't planned, it just showed up and the city was able to make it happen. Uh, and interestingly enough, uh, West Star said, wait a minute, we needed some of that, but you didn't call us. And we said, well, let's talk. And the city was able to sell West Star to expand their existing substation substantially and recover a large piece of the actual purchase price of the service center. Yeah. Uh, so that was, that was, uh, a very nice uh, deal and then I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of a million or million and a half dollars at the time to construct the service center uh, essentially as we see it today we've added a few things here and there and, and uh, a previous city commission has uh, had the opportunity and took advantage of to acquire property that's immediately west of the west fence we mow it it's not fenced uh, because we would already had the big fence up but when uh, one property owner owned uh, that big strip of property back there and sold it to the city at a very favorable price, should the time come when we need to expand, uh, we can move that fence further to the west. In the 25 years, has the HVAC system had to be replaced? or? Uh, I think every moving part has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're still working on that, I guess. Yes. Yeah. No, there's, there, uh, the furnaces have been replaced. The uh, air conditioning system's been replaced, the big ventilation fans have been replaced. The only thing that's kind of holding its own is the original uh, infrared heaters that were there when it was a steel fabrication plant. I think we're using six or eight of them. One of them finally died. So uh, they're very date back to the building construction in the 70s and we finally had to replace one of them. And, and they actually make the same, essentially exact same heater. Uh, but uh, it was cheaper to buy a new one than it was to steal parts off of one of the ones we're not using. Because sometimes the future parts might become a problem, right? For uh, that's, what so. eBay's, that's what eBay's okay. for, I think. But, uh, okay. But it's, it is, yeah, the HVAC systems have been uh, a challenge, and they just need to be kept after if they're maintained. And you have people that are willing to say, that doesn't look like it's working right. Let's take a look at it and find out if it is or is not. Any other questions on the service center? Right, move on to refuse. Refuse. Uh, refuse collection. Uh, this is going to be an interesting, uh, interesting year. Uh, the city has approximately what 10,000, 11,000 refuse customers. 
uh, all residential with some small commercial mixed in, and we pick up trash uh, from uh, multi-units up to four units. After that, they uh, they need to arrange for their own trash service, as do most, uh, uh, all industrial and most commercials will arrange their own service. Uh, there are uh, a number of 15 employees, including a, a foreman and a clerk, and I believe uh, Steve King, our refuse foreman, is here uh, this afternoon. Uh, they pick up trash four days a week. We pick up uh, what they call it the rubble route, which is large things, height of beds, recliner, chairs. Um, usually it's, uh, I'm sorry, usually it's metal items we pick up on Friday. The bulk items get picked up within 24 hours of the trash day. Right, they yeah. can call and make an appointment on that. Or right, well, if, for, if I get a washing machine I want to throw out there. For right? metal items, yes, you can call, yes. And then say, if you put it with your regular trash, we'll tag it and we'll come back and pick it up on Friday, or you can call and set up an appointment to pick okay. it up on Friday. Okay. And that's but the bulk all items like your rate. Sorry. And that's all included in your rate, that's all included yeah. in your as rate. well as unlimited trash right. um, all the time. And 100 trash bags. Yeah. And long clothes. Oh, I see no, no, each bag is 50. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. With ties. With ties. <laughs> <laughs> and, a, and a note from City Hall. That's the expensive part. And I'm sure that you're aware that the city is uh, reevaluating uh, alternate disposal methods currently. Uh, the Solid waste goes to the county's transfer station. Uh, they are dramatically raising rates next year. We are evaluating some bids that we received from uh, Pam's Quarry and Waste Management, otherwise known as Duffenbaugh, that we'll bring to the commission here in the next few weeks. I'm going on the Please. July 24th meeting. Um, I'll give you a little bit of update on it, tell you what the numbers are. Um, we received word from the county that they were increasing our rates effective January 1st, $10. Um, a ton. We bring between 12 and 15,000 tons a year uh, to the transfer station, so you're looking at a $120,000 to $150,000 increase. We did put it out to bid. Um, we certainly expected hams to be the lowest they traditionally have been. Uh, waste management came in with um, a very low rate. They gave us a, a one year rate, a three year rate, and a five year rate. Um, uh, it's closer than hams, um, but there was some concern in years past about once you get to the gate, how long does it actually take? To get there and get out. We have run 10 trial runs. Yes, 10 yes. trucks. 10 and trucks of trial runs to test it, um, and it's gone well. Um, so when you see it on the 24th, um, their rate um, is roughly $20 per ton cheaper than the county's. So, uh, so $20 cheaper than, than the, the county's new rate. New right. rate yes. is $10 cheaper than their current rate. Right. And the county, Board of County Commissioners, took action in a meeting to raise our rates? No, we received notification from the county administrator that that would be our rate effective January 1. That's the only communication yeah. I have. But I don't think there's a county commission vote. I mean, it maybe didn't have to. Right, they would have to do that during their budget time, and, and I'm unaware that they've done that. I, I haven't paid attention to all the county meetings. We have to act on what we had, which was sure. just correspondence from the county commission. Now, you two gentlemen are on the waste management uh, I am. They cut the committee to a third of its former size. Earth. You got. You got Aaron. Yes. <laughs> this, this is why the smile. <laughs> County <laughs> solid waste <laughs> group. But, so the waste management committee uh, met on that and decided to raise the. No, sir. They did. They did not. The uh, All right. information was presented to the solid waste committee from the county staff <laughs> that said uh, this is the new rate. And there was no vote or real discussion huh. other than philosophically that it really changes the nature of the original agreements that created the transfer station in the first place. Now we're, I'm sure that we're the largest user of the transfer station in the county yes. by far. We're, we're probably what, 85%? Well, no, we're about a third of the revenue for the transfer station. For and a third of the revenue and 50% of the volume. I'm, I, it's probably the product. Yeah, product. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, potentially we could drop out of that. Um, yeah, I don't want to get ahead of the meeting on the 24th or staff recommendation, but um, with the drastic uh, improve, uh, with, with the way that the training runs have gone and with the cost, um, we would have to dramatically raise refuse rates to accommodate the county's schedule. Um, and we do have, we, we've done an analysis, and you'll see this on the 24th, there is a little bit more, there's gas, there's time involved, um, but when you're looking at a number like potentially $150,000 over the course of a year, 
it's it's uh, much easier to make that up if you have thirty thousand dollars more in gas, yeah. and it doesn't necessarily harm the trucks to get out on the highway and drive. Right. Sometimes it's actually well, car, beneficial. I'm not a mechanic, but this is what this is what the people tell me who know what they're talking about. Um, so it's it's uh, really about time. So yeah, but don't we have one extra truck that can be rolling? Yeah, we've we talked we talked about that. I think they used to do that when they were hams. There would there would be a, a a driver essentially, so you'd bring a, a full load back, and that one driver would go, and then the crew would take the empty truck. So we've we've talked about that kind of stuff too. Um, when we used to shuttle, keep in mind that that was years ago, so the right. town was smaller. So as it's grown, uh, so of our routes. So we'll put that in our yeah. yeah that's part, part of our thought process so is uh, recommendation that will come to the commission. What was the reason for them raising? Did they state a reason? What was communicated to me, and, and Mr. McDonald can certainly clarify here, was that when the, when the original philosophy of the transfer station was to have attractive rates for local users and then a subsidization on a countywide uh, transfer station fee. So everybody would pay for it. So, um, but the philosophical change that was communicated to us was that um, it should be user fee um, supported with the intent to either eliminate or drastically reduce the, that countywide assessment that goes to everybody in the county. Um, so then, you know, we would be then paying a much larger share. So it almost would operate like an enterprise fund rather than as a service to the county with a small subsidization, which, by the way, City of Leavenworth residents pay the refuse rate and the countywide assessment. So the idea that, that the rest of the county is subsidizing the city of Leavenworth's trash service, um, I don't believe holds water. Right. So, uh, so I'm just going to ask a quick question. Is the county aware that we're considering? I've, I've notified the county, uh, and we sent the bid to the county, um, and I've talked to the county commission that, uh, about the results of our bid process, so they are aware of that. And I have not received any further communication. And I've confirmed with county staff that uh, we have uh, received bids and we'll be discussing this on the 24th. Okay. What were we, uh, what are we pay paying per ton right now? $35 a ton? Tipping fee? Yeah, we have been paying thirty-two fifty. We got a slightly low, we have a slightly lower rate than the stated rate as the largest user. Um, and we were, we're up to 35 at the time. 35 and then want to raise it to 45. 45. And we're getting, and now we've got it quoted at 25. Uh, about so, there, maybe even a little lower. Yeah. So, uh, we talk 15,000 tons times 20, and there's 300,000 dollars extra. Yeah, it's obviously we'll talk about it on the 24th, but Absolutely. this will have a major impact on the county wide transportation. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, but that's, not, that's not our deal, it's just uh, you know, what it is. Uh, today, for example, Thursday's the trash day. How many trucks do you have rolling right now? Two, four, four trucks going, and some of them have. Two man, some of them have three man. Uh, yeah, depending on staff. Usually, some have two. Let me see that. Okay, four, eight. Yeah, some would have a full crew of three. That's a lot of two. And well, we'll talk about them 24 and talk about Roger down there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks for that information, Mr. Kramer. Yeah, I mean, the savings would also potentially allow us to bring another person on. I mean, yeah, the same yeah, as at that level. Probably. So, yeah. yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's, uh, Did, what kind of discussions did they have with us about this, or did you just... Uh, it was communicated to me from um, our representative to the Solid Waste Management Committee that it was presented there, and it was this, essentially the same way with me, just an email indicating the new rate. Oh, no discussion with with you or anything else, and we're considering this, how can we work together? No, sure. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Be interesting, 24. I think there is a rate increase budgeted. Uh, we're trying to uh, purchase uh, trucks that don't have the problems that some of our uh, early um, exhaust gas additives or whatever, their diesel fuel additives, had. They did work well in our environment and were costing us a, a, a substantial amount of money to maintain. We traded one of the newer trucks in on the last truck we bought. And we've got one more to go, and so uh, Curtis has been working with Ruby to kind of get an aggressive truck replacement schedule. We'll get us back on uh, basically a new truck every other year, which has kind of been our goal and tradition. Mm -hmm. 
So you keep your basically keep your trucks about ten years. Okay. Any other questions on the record? No. Uh, I'm well, sure you hear this quite often, Mr. Still, March, but the two other, we still have two other records. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that's just the collection. On on collection, I hear, I'm sure you hear a lot. I hear nothing but good things about. Yeah, it's a tough duty when it's five degrees outside and it's tough duty when it's 105. It's tougher at 100 than it is at five. Paul, did you want to talk about the trash bags in the in the okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't see. Is there anybody here from the Alliance? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Curtis, could you step, step back just for a second? Sure. So come up. Absolutely. The Lions Club has approached the city about um, an increase. The city pays the Lions Club um, to distribute trash bags twice a year. Currently, um, it's about $4,300 each time, so $86, um, $86 or it's really $0.45 cents per delivery. Um, it's been that way since I started, probably at least 10 years or so. They requested a $0.10 cent per delivery increase that essentially is a 20, about a $2,000 increase over the year. Um, uh, Taylor over and I, the year or over the every yeah, six months? No, if you, if you, if you multiply it total, it's, uh, it's okay. uh, about $1,000 per time for, for, for twice a year, so about $2,000. Uh, Taylor did a quick analysis for me on um, how do you cover that if you don't cover it in a, a tiny increase to the rate increase. Um, the bags that you buy from the clerk's office or from the service center are $6 a roll. You don't have to increase all the bags you get, the bags you get twice a year in a roll, but if you just increase the ones that were purchased separately, somebody came in because they needed a third roll or a fourth roll other than the two that they got, $1 a bag, you can cover that increase. They've been $6 a bag for 25 years. Or 30. Uh, or 30. Um, it's probably the best deal you've ever gotten. Um, so you could do that, um, but the I wanted to uh, show you their increase. Well, why are they asking for an increase? Because they're... She's here. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Uh, <laughs> sure. I, uh, My Lions uh, Club hat on today. Okay. Yeah. Um, Is it all your drivers and, and your runners and everything all volunteers for the line? We, yes, uh, Lions Club members volunteer their trucks. Um, we get some from Zach Ford. Um, club members do the work. We also get some fantastic help from St. Mary's, their football team, and then the Honor Society, J, uh, JROTC from the high school. Um, one of the reasons to ask for it uh, is the trash bag along with our pecan sales is our two biggest fundraisers that the Lions Club have. And that money is donated out to the community here in uh, St. Vincent's, um, plus a lot of our other projects, Lions, their main emphasis is site. So we have to the library, the large print books, um, some Kansas, the audio reader, the School of the Blind, um, other things here in town. There's a Boy yeah, Scout, Girl list, Scout, huh? A whole list of them, yeah. yeah, a whole list of stuff. Um, their needs are getting greater, and we're basically pulling from the same pool, our same funds every time, so we're having to stretch it further. Um, Which, what's the other project besides the distribution of trash bags? Right. Um, in, the, in the fall, um, we sell pecans, one oh. pound bags of pecans for your Christmas baking. Yeah. And I, I think they both end up around, you know, eight thousand dollars a piece, both projects. But it has been forty-five cents for quite a while. So to cover that, Mr. Kramer, Mr. Ted, you both said when I come in the clerk's office, it says one. six bucks, seven dollars, and we must sell. Uh, we sell a thousand bags a year, a thousand rolls. Yeah, we get it works out if you raise them a dollar, you would generate about twenty five hundred dollars. Their increase is about two thousand, so round it off a dollar for supplemental bags, not the two for two yeah. that you get with your thing, but yeah. the service center in here. Um, that would be what it yeah, is. So. Any of you ever, well, everyone knows that the roll bags look like I mean, it's a heck of a deal for seven bucks, six bucks, four seven bucks. Uh, okay. Any questions, lines, or? Mr. Tedder or Mr. Kramer on this? 
I just feel like the Lions could be making more money if they did all the banks themselves rather than have the Easton and Lansing do it. We could. You could make a lot more money. We could make a lot more money. Um, our club is growing, so maybe that's a goal to look for this year. I just hate the idea of charging our residents more money to um, cover cover that. Okay. That's just that's my concern. I have to think about the residents first. I love the Lions Club too, but I have to think about <laughs> the residents first. A former past president. Yeah. A, not a former past president, a past president. Not a former president. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. If so, Brandon, that is something we can discuss yeah. at you know at Lions Board at the meetings there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not something we have to decide right now. No, I mean, no, we're not making right decisions. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Are, there, are there any other questions of uh, Lions Club or? Uh, Just all the proceeds would are, are going to these organizations that yes. you mentioned? Mm -hmm. Yes. The only the other thing I'd offer is just as an observer is they do a really good job. Yeah. I mean, we're happy with the service. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's true. And it is, and it is, yeah. it is saving the city from having to pay overtime. Yeah. And that's basically that what, how it was figured in years past was it that if we, if uh, the service center uh, sent them out, it costs just this much, yeah. approximately this much yeah. overtime, so they kind of factored that in. It wasn't so much overtime, it was it took a week. Yeah. And were, <laughs> which is not. Which, which is yeah. work you're not getting yeah, done. Yeah, so. That's the factor. Right. Right. It still is, yeah. Okay. It still is extra, yeah. Yeah. extra cost for them. It's not on like one Saturday, right? I mean, yeah, it's one Saturday in March, one Saturday in September. Right. Usually Twice. done done by early afternoon. Yeah. 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 City provides some limited uh, assistance of loading bags and yeah, checking them out and that sort of thing. We okay. can we can think about it, talk about it more later, can't we? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's that? Uh, uh, refuse disposal uh, that also, which is on eighty five, which includes your recycling center. Right. That disposal is uh, besides transfer station, we have uh, recycling and a brush uh, brush disposal site. Uh, recycling is is operated uh, uh, Tuesday through Saturday uh, from uh, what nine to one I think eight thirty to twelve thirty eight thirty to twelve thirty okay. and uh, it's a it's a self service thing we do have it staffed with uh, with city representative to get stuff in the right bin and answer questions and it's a uh, generates uh, revenue from the stuff that has value that gets recycled but we do recycle everything that comes in it doesn't go out with the trash uh, the uh, brush site off of second street uh, is is pretty popular uh, if, if you look at the numbers uh, we, we do offer free disposal for residents uh, on the first saturday of the month and those uh, uh, those numbers tend to be higher than any other Saturdays in the month, so people know the rules and know how to how to work that. Uh, we will generate a substantial pile of tree limbs. We take uh, natural vegetation up to 12 inches in diameter. Uh, if the weather. Oh, trees. Trees. Yeah. Trees. <laughs> Not the vegetation. But yeah. It's uh, yeah. natural vegetation. Yeah. But uh, it. it uh, we also take commercial. Uh, but there's a limit to the same size. Most commercial uh, people will chip theirs and do something with it. But uh, we will burn the accumulated trash if the wind and the circumstances are correct. If uh, they're not, uh, we will have a, what they call tub grinder come in and it picks it up and runs it through a machine that spits it out in kind of pieces about like, like that. Uh, when times were tough and the economy was down, the tub grinding was a very affordable alternative. These days, with a lot of construction projects going on, they have a lot of sites that need clearing that they can't burn. Tub grinders are in short supply, so their price has gone up. Uh, and the, we haven't been able to burn as often as we like, basically because of the, the wind direction and the accumulation. The material didn't line up quite right. But it is uh, a very popular thing that we do. Uh, it's staffed. Uh, we. Uh, with an employee, give your receipt, uh, write your license number down. You have to show some identification uh, that you're uh, some association with the, with Leavenworth, uh, driver's license address, or uh, uh, utility bill with your address in Leavenworth on it, sort of thing. Attempt to.
to keep it Leavenworth residents getting the benefit of the, the program. And maybe I'm speaking out of turn, but in talking to <coughs> residents and that, I've had people talk to me about recycling and that sort of thing, but I really like the recycling center, and when I'm, when I'm there, there's always a lot of people there. Um, and uh, I, I think they would rather not want to give up what we have in the way of service in order to provide recycling. Because um, you'd have to contract or, or spend a lot more money to do that. So it's my understanding. Is that correct? It's, it's, a, uh, it's a thought that comes around periodically and we're providing some information to the city manager. I'm sure it will come back to the commission for a discussion. But it is uh, this part of the country, recyclables have limited to no value. If you're on either coast, there's some uh, legitimate value to almost everything because it gets shipped off in giant containers to far off places Correct. to mm -hmm. be made into because of China. That's all yeah, the, yeah. It, that whole market's in turmoil now with the, the yeah. between the tariffs and the crackdown yeah. quality of recyclables and that sort of thing. If I just throw in a quick side note, the problem is when you have commingled or single stream, it's all mixed and you need a MRF. Somebody's got to separate it to get the value. Mm -hmm. What we offer at the recycling side is a clean product, so we get high dollar for it. We get the best that's available. Yeah. There, there is a, in the old steel plant down there, almost Lawrence on uh, K32, there is a sorting center, I forget which company operates that, but that is, it's like a certified sorting center, and they take trash, or uh, uh, re commingled recyclables, and they got machines and some people and sorts it all out and you end up with all your like milk jugs over here and your beer cans over there. It's, it's pretty fascinating, but once again, it's not cheap to do that. But yeah, that's their effort. Uh, their clients pay for that because their customers expect that that, that particular company recycles their leftover material uh, and, uh, and they're quite happy to pay for, the, for a company that certifies they do it right. Okay. Um, questions? No. Mm -hmm. Refuse restricted? Uh, the refuse restricted is uh, essentially the old landfill on uh, Gillen Road uh, south of, well, it used to be south of Lansing, now it's near the southern border of Lansing. I think Lansing surrounds it at this point. But it was the city's landfill for uh, from the 70s to the early 90s. Uh, the state requirement is that the city has funds set aside to maintain the site uh, for a number of years, and so that is the reason we call it the Refuge Restricted Fund, is to segregate those money so it can be tracked in case the state wants to come see how, how we take care of business. Generally, at this point in our life, uh, the Refuge Restricted Fund is used to for annual water samples, uh, mowing, uh, contract, and that's about it, unless we find, we've had erosion projects we've had to address. There have been, uh, um, I guess really, uh, we had to relocate one of the monitoring wells because uh, it had uh, become contaminated from, uh, from the mm -hmm. creek, got really high and flowed into it, so we had to create a new well. But that is, uh, uh, we don't have any large scale projects okay. known out there, so that budget is, uh, fairly well decreased over the year, but we're still required to maintain a funding source to address closed landfill issues. Okay. The model Airplane Club still uses it and they help maintain it. Yes. They do a good job. They do a good job. Yeah. No complaints. No, they enjoy that. Well, is this a lot of perpetuity? I mean, we have to... I think technically there's an end time for the uh, <clears throat> maintenance, but I sincerely doubt that they'll actually uh, let you end it. So. But uh, in, as time goes on, our costs become less and less. They, they, the, the groundwater sampling has come back very good, so they extended the, you don't have to do it three times a year, you do it once a year, and that sort of thing. Every five years we're doing it next year. Yeah, and you're, and you're gonna have to mow. They don't want woody vegetation growing on it because the roots go down, uh, down into the trash, <clears throat> and if the tree dies, then the water can get down into it. Uh, we don't have any known leachate areas we dealt with those a number of years ago with uh, improving the grading on the cap and uh, some other repairs okay. uh, I, I think we've been approached by others wanting to use the landfill for different types of things from time to time and 
the model airplane club kind of worked out best. We we do store some of our equipment in a building out there, like the the big pumps in case we get flooded. I think the sandbags are out there. Uh, a few other odds and ends of things that that are in the storage shed out there. Leaf collection, WPCF might have a couple of right pumps out there. Yeah, the, the leaf actors get stored out there too. Okay. Questions? Um, any need for a break before we start engineering? That's the, the last minutes? big one. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Right, five minutes. Take five minutes. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, we're back. We're in. Believe it or not, we're right on time. 315 Engineering, and look who's here. <laughs> be uh, an inspection, I guess. Okay. Uh, building inspection uh, is uh, one of the functions that the city performs. It's uh, operated out of the second floor at City Hall. Hal Burdett is the chief building official or chief inspector. It depends on who he's talking to. Uh, and he has uh, two building inspectors and a clerk that work for him. We inspect commercial and residential and industrial construction uh, clients uh, uh, make sure that the compliance with the plans is good and work with planning and zoning on uh, their issues review site plans uh, by engineering and that information is all uh, for the most part uh, done nicely coordinated with our new immune system uh, I think permits uh, are issued uh, easier now than perhaps they might have been under the old paper system uh, but it's still been a transition uh, period uh, even in the depths of the great depression of the last 10 years we did have buildings uh, that were built that needed inspection remodelings that needed inspection commercial industrial projects we have these uh, uh, crazy uh, hotel constructions that have been going on we've got loft apartments variety of things but the biggest shortage that we've had has been single-family dwellings uh, I think when no one else was building houses back in uh, 2009 10 11 we were still building single-family houses in this town when the economy got better they quit building here and with the recent subdivision uh, uh, West Glen subdivision off New Lawrence Road uh, we have a substantial number of new houses uh, currently permitted and some more waiting to get permitted but the number of they were 11 have been issued another one's pending then we got then we got three others throughout town that are in various stages right now so there's the projection out there on new houses I think 70 something single family uh, it's a, 101 in uh, West Glen and, yes. and then we expect a plaque coming in shortly for about 77 in a different area okay. so it's uh, hopefully we're back in the uh, new construction uh, uh, residential boom but they uh, uh, we keep our codes uh, fairly current with the uh, prevailing uh, codes systems in neighboring communities uh, we do uh, we do inspect all levels of construction uh, if people have a complex set of uh, commercial plans uh, or uh, Multi, uh, like one of the loft apartment plants, we will look at them ourselves. They generally get sent out for a third party review for technical issues uh, in the construction that uh, we're not set up to look at. And uh, we uh, so we work tightly with uh, all the other departments, uh, fire department and planning and zoning, particularly on uh, on issuing permits. If you have any other insight on? No. What happened in terms of residential remodeling, like a, a kitchen or a bathroom? I mean, well, we we won't know about that unless the contractor or the, the homeowner correct goes, goes goes ahead and files, right? Correct. So, you know, there, there's always been work going on in this town that we're not sure. aware of. Mm -hmm. But when, when we do find out, and if it's a homeowner, yeah, we're trying to, you know, right. contact them, ask them to get the permits. And okay. Whether you're a homeowner or a contractor, inspections are still required. Uh, okay. Permits are still issued. We yep. issue permits to homeowners. So. Okay. Good. Yeah, we 
we don't have any uh, plans to change much of anything in the inspection. Uh, if we continue our role with housing, you may see a request to another building inspector in a few years. We like had this three. Meeting. We had three. three. Yes, sir. What, what year did we? 2014, maybe? Somewhere, I think Buddy retired in 13 or 14, and that's when we went down to two field inspectors. And at that point, there wasn't really a need for that third one, and I, I, how can speak to this better than we are? I really don't. Honestly, I don't think there is a need at this point with the level of construction we got going. I mean, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable asking for a third inspector at this time. Great. Great. Yeah. Very good team right now, I think. Yeah, very good staff. What was our big big number year for houses? Before the housing market crash hit, we were at 145 homes. The year prior to that, we were at like 130. Yeah, the last few right. years, we've been around 20. Mm -hmm. On a, let's say, $250,000 house and just ballpark it, how much would uh, uh, inspection fees be building permits? I would guess the building permit somewhere around $2,000. And then the electrical, mechanical, and plumbing, probably another four to $500 for those permits. So just take it 1% approximately. So yeah, it's, it's a sliding parking, scale, yeah. but yes. Yeah. Okay. Most new home permits fall somewhere in the <coughs> low 1600s up into the 2000s okay. for the permit. It's all based on square footage. Sure. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Al. <coughs> Thanks, Okay, somewhere in there is engineering. Engineering is engineering. Engineering was first. 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 Engineering was the uh, senior uh, senior engineering tech would be Mike Steven. He has two inspectors that work uh, for him. Uh, we have my admin assistant and our GIS uh, person, uh, who we talked about earlier, will be getting uh, a helper GIS person, which would be greatly appreciated. Uh, we review and uh, coordinate uh, plans and specifications for our, our uh, civil projects. Uh, we inspect the projects, everything from streets and sewers constructed as part of the city commission funded projects or developer funded projects like West Glen subdivision. And then there's the, the interesting projects like the business and technology park, which was a, a, a little different structure. But they all get inspected uh, with uh, from the civil side uh, by uh, Mike Steven and his inspectors. Uh, we keep our uh, records, uh, plans, and specifications. Uh, we work with uh, contractors and developers to make sure that uh, our plans and specifications are meaningful. We uh, hold uh, interesting discussions about uh, our stormwater program, the grease trap program, which uh, I should have mentioned with Hal. That's been a new task that we've uh, created in the last few years is, is pretty aggressive grease trap management throughout the community. There's, uh, well, you don't know what kind of a phone call you're going to get today. It could be somebody has a sinkhole mm -hmm. in their backyard. It could be there's a light, red light out somewhere. It could be somebody's tree, neighbor's tree fell over the fence and they want the city to do something about it. It's just, you don't know what's going to come in. So everyone in our office kind of has a broad knowledge of how to be nice to people to call. And if they don't know the answer, find somebody that doesn't get back to them because questions you don't know the answers to come in. <coughs> What's the term? Grease trap? What term did you use? Was it? Grease trap. Grease trap. Grease trap. Grease well, trap. Trap. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. There you go, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And that's been actually at the, the helping helping people manage their grease traps. Okay. <laughs> I thought we were saying about a grease trap program. <laughs> that's been pretty effective. We've got a, we've got a lot of. You can mention that. Uh, right? Okay. Got a lot of uh, getting a lot of mileage out of that. Okay. Uh, we're looking forward to the new stormwater uh, 
funding. Uh, that's really exciting. I don't know that uh, any of us have been on a new program from the, basically the ground floor up. So this will be uh, uh, not just an expansion of what we do, but it's taking on a whole new direction for the community with mm -hmm. stuff that we shared with the commission and the community. Uh, and then all the all the uh, all the other strange things that we do, like we work with the police department on. Uh, they have drones and they have drone pilots, and they need projects to practice on. We've kind of given them a list of things. Uh, some of which are more important to us than others. They've been good to work with on getting us information for our needs as well as giving their uh, police officers opportunity to practice with the, the new technology. Um, the uh, uh, Working on the stormwater, uh, after a uh, visit from our friends at the EPA, we, as you know, we've really beefed up our stormwater inspections and requirements uh, that's gone very well with the, the staff that we have uh, working with the contractors we, we have uh, uh, won friends and influence people by everyone that has a detention basin or something else that was constructed on a project to address water quantity or quality reminding them that they have uh, maintenance responsibilities and if they can tell us what it was they did last year to uh, maintain their facility uh, some people, like Walmart, will send us a report that's that thick. Uh, some people will send us an email back that says, I mowed the lawn and I picked up the trash, and that's fine. And some people just ignore us, so we're going to be needing to take that to the next level to, to uh, get a little get a little bit better response on that. Uh, so there's, uh, as I, it's a good group of folk in the office. You'll see Mike Cooper as often as uh, you'll see me at uh, various meetings and things. And Mike Steven has really taken on the uh, kind of uh, managing the inspectors and uh, getting the plans and specs out to bid, which is uh, uh, what we were hoping would happen. And I don't think there's any new tools in here other than a GIS person on our budget this year. Questions? No. Uh, buildings and grounds, 92. Okay. Uh, hopefully, house go here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Buildings and buildings and grounds is. Uh, I think we split library out separate. Yeah. And building and grounds is used to refer to city hall and some other buildings, but now it refers to taking care of city hall. That's uh, everything from. Uh, uh, janitorial service to uh, roof leaks to bids on repairing the repairing the roof or dealing with the generator not starting that sort of thing uh, the city has invested uh, a, a, f a fair amount of money in uh, improving city hall i think 15 16 years ago and our goal uh, is to keep it the way that has been upgraded because it's a very nice place to work. Uh, the, the heating and cooling systems work. I think the uh, access for employees and the public is very effective. Uh, there are problems inside the building. We do our best to uh, correct them as quickly as we can. Okay. Questions on building the ground? No. And the Parks Department is, takes care of the outside outside portion of the building as we take the inside and building it itself. And space to round up on those bricks and it would be well, Those guys have already left. <laughs> <laughs> Attention to detail. Yeah. <laughs> Want to get a digger of salt. <laughs> yeah. Library. Library. Uh, we do have a project we're you know, working on this year, which is the uh, atrium replacement. We've got preliminary drawings from our engineer uh, to basically make that a very nice place instead of a kind of a scary place. Uh, the the uh, library uh, HVAC system upgrade, we sunk a lot of money into that. And I, I believe that's all working. If there's any. And Matt said yesterday it was working very, very well. Well, that's, so, I was going to say, Matt, if he had an opinion, he, that, that yeah. was, uh, he would let us know. Right. So I appreciate uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, uh, it, it was a struggle to get there, uh, and to our knowledge, and it sounds like it's confirmed by the library director that, that what we did seems to be working. 
the, the library atrium budget, in case you're wondering, is 66500 We also spent $7,000 upgrading the lights in the parking lot at the library. So in addition to maintenance, HVAC, uh, the city spent um, about $73,000 this year on other improvements to the library. Okay. couple other words in passing, if I, if I might, Mr. Mayor, is we've got the Riverfront Community Center Stone Project coming up. Mike Cooper is kind of babysitting that. He's learned a whole new bureaucracy at KDOT with that. Uh, and we are working on the Thornton Project, which would be uh, a dramatic improvement. We, we haven't done a large street improvement in a number of years. I think this will set the tone for, for a long ways in the future with uh, what we can do on we see an important project that needs to be done. When, you, when will that be complete? I'm sorry, go ahead. No. Uh, what, when it, do you expect? Yeah, plan, is, plan is under construction next year and finished in 2020. It's, uh, we're talking to the engineer. They, they have visions that it could be done more quickly, but uh, I don't want to say that. Okay. okay. The, the design phase is going on this year? It's going on currently, yes, sir. And? Street lighting. Mike, you Street, 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 lighting. street lighting is uh, one of those uh, things that you do, you don't ever notice till till you, you notice it's not working. Mm -hmm. And the lights up on Arbor Way, if you uh, remember, we had a, a project. We took out a series of lights that the city owned. I think there were six of them. We put back eleven uh, West Star lights. That work's done. And I saw today that the poles are down. Our old poles have been removed. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't been able to go by there at night this time of year. It's 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 dark late enough. I'm not out driving sure, around, uh, but it uh, it looks like it ought to make a huge difference. And I've heard from others that uh, it's, it's quite shocking with the, the lighting difference it's made. But street lights aren't free, as you can see. There's a uh, uh, there's a there's a pretty good chunk of uh, revenue goes toward that. And our and the electricity bill. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But uh, I would think that the electricity would, I mean, the rates would be, what we're paying would be a little less in terms of just kind of the, 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 the modern, I'm just thinking that they would have installed kind of more modern lights, right, in terms sure. of uh, them. What yeah, they all, they've, all, they've all switched to, all the lights have been switched to an LED. Right. Uh, uh, I don't think they charge us for the privilege, but we don't get to share in their electricity savings either. So it's, sure. it's the standard. Right. It's the standard uh, a rate. You pay a bit of a premium to have a steel pole uh, rather than overhead wire. Uh, the cheapest rate is a, is a wood pole with overhead wires, and we've decided a number of years ago that we didn't really want those in the new subdivisions, and we require them to all be underground. And uh, the city has generally uh, has decided that uh, the new subdivisions should have metal poles for street lights rather than wood poles. Uh, it looks like a modern town rather than that's great yeah. rather than the that's old good. west yeah <laughs> yeah that's good uh there was some brief discussion i had with uh west R about uh, the privatizing the street lights and they said at least in west R service area that no city has ever privatized the street lighting system although they think in the kansas power and light side of things they're all combined now one or two cities have uh, for the life of us, we couldn't figure out why it was a good idea to do that unless they just wanted access to the infrastructure to do some city, something with the city on the poles because they don't just give you this stuff if you privacy, you got to buy it. And then you got to, if, if you want to, if, if you have a burned out light bulb or some other problem with your street lights, you have to have people in a truck and all of that, and that costs money. Uh, so, we couldn't come up with any rational reason to it would save them city money to privatize street lighting. It's it's an option that's out there, but uh, I've looked at it enough. I wasn't confident to, yeah. to advocate for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Mike's final one uh, is the airport. airport. And if it's broken, we'll fix it. Uh, we will talk to Dean when he calls uh, and try to understand what he's trying to tell us. To Best of uh, my knowledge, the airport is is running fine. Does he get very much traffic in and out of there now? 
I haven't talked to him about that long he says he does, but uh, the, uh, the general officers from the East Coast come in when they when they have the pre-command courses, which are every like one, at least once a month. Sometimes they have twice a month. So we're in I the mean, military side. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're oh, in the you're military. talking our side. Yeah, yeah, yeah our, our side. Yeah. 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 Our side used to be really busy, but That's once they closed yeah, the yeah. fort up, a lot of them sold their planes or moved them elsewhere. And they still do a lot of lessons, and, I know, up yeah. there. And, we do have some business owners in town who use that. And, uh, Dean Ayers invested in a classroom. We built a separate classroom building for the instructional classes because they were bigger than he could accommodate in his regular office building. But I, hmm. I have been up there for a while. Uh, it's very nice. Um, you should take a look if you're up there. Yeah. Um, it's got nice glass windows. You can see, see the whole. They're responsible for the maintenance of the, the facility, or what, what are we responsible for as a city? As a uh, we own the building, the main hangar building. Okay. He owns both sets of T hangers. I, I can't remember. It's an agreement somewhere. Uh, he owns at least one set of the T hangers, and I think it's who owns the. The original set of tea hangers is, is always up for discussion, and then he owns the uh, building, uh, the new uh, classroom building. Our agreement with the fort is like a 25-year agreement. That's we're probably what five or six years into it. Uh, it's an interesting 25-year agreement because the fort can cancel it at any time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they close the airport at any time. So uh, for for Dean to invest what he's invested in up there is, is a pretty confident individual uh, in spending his own money up there because we're not bankrolling his improvements, although we do pay to uh, for I think utilities for, for his building. And Common things that we end up uh, dealing with are like the striping on the airstrip, uh, plumbing, okay. um, yeah. propane tank issues, things of that nature. So. Any other engineering related questions for Michael Donald? No. Thanks, Mike. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks, Mr. Hooper and Mr. Burnett. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. LCDC. Mr. Steve Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you all. Thanks, too. Would you like a quick review of where we are and our request? Sure. Okay. Um, we've requested uh, a slight increase from last year, $48,472. I think last year we're just under forty eight, dollars so uh, 47973 And uh, that's based on, as you know, a uh, uh, formula, assessed valuation, and, and population. And the population uh, moved up a bit, as did... Uh, the uh, valuation about four million. Now let's see, more than that. Yeah, it was about four four million dollars, a little under four million. So um, uh, I thought I'd just mention a couple of things and give you an update on on some prospects, um, and then a new initiative that uh, was approved at the at today's uh, board meeting, which is a, a major uh, initiative. And since you weren't there, John. Uh, uh, but first, uh, uh, we've had four serious uh, uh, prospects looking at the new uh, business uh, and technology part. Uh, the first one was Project Gear last month. Uh, we were shortlisted. Uh, there were 11 projects on the Kansas City, uh, uh, Greater Kansas City area. Uh, 11 communities and we were shortlisted among the six that they wanted to come visit and so they did actually it was at the uh, last day of May May 30th and they visited um, they were looking for 8 to 15 acres distribution center uh, highly automated uh, automated uh, 200,000 square foot building potentially big building but only 40 jobs for that big a building uh, but that's because of the distribution. Uh, not real high wage jobs, but, but uh, uh, 40 is still uh, a pretty good uh, uh, shot at, with uh, uh, 8 to 15 acres. So we provided some more information on labor. Um, uh, it was pointed out that we have a series of uh, traffic lights 
uh, to get to an interstate. We're not that far from interstate, mm -hmm. but uh, there are in fact 12 uh, from the park to I-70. And so uh, if you're a distribution center and you got a lot of trucks going, um, uh, we might not be as competitive. The one that came yesterday, Project Trigger, uh, it's only eight to 10 jobs. Uh, they need uh, 10 to 15 acres, uh, but these jobs are uh, uh, four or five machinists and four or five engineers. And the average wage is 82,000. And the capital investment on a 30,000 square foot building is $6 million for the building and another $6.2 million for the machinery and equipment. So we were excited because of the investment in, in the, 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 uh, the building, uh, the quality of the company w w that we found uh, uh, just a couple weeks ago who it was, and that this would be a, uh, an R&D facility, and they need an area that has, is, uh, that has four distinct seasons. So when they came in yesterday and it was hotter than you know what, that was a good thing, and uh, because where they are right now, they they don't have those seasons, and they need some outside area for for uh, testing um, uh, of their product. So engineers, machinists, they need a link with a school, and so Taylor and I uh, uh, brought uh, the University of Kansas, Kansas City, uh, Kansas uh, Community College, and they did a really nice job talking about uh, what they could contribute on the machining side. They started, this company started off with 256 sites uh, in 165 communities, and they have 17 left. And two of those are in Leavenworth County, the Tonganoxie Park and, and the Leavenworth Park. So um, today they are in um, uh, around the Hutchinson and Mound Ridge area, and then they're done with their uh, four or five state look in the last 17. So. Uh, Taylor has provided some, or is asking for, I think, some additional information. Uh, they wanted some more detail on uh, soil testing and compaction, and so as soon as we can get that to them, um, uh, the better. They ask similar questions for, for Tonganoxie. So, so Project Gear first, last uh, in, in late May, Project Trigger. Uh, that's exciting when you make that paper cut because it's easy to put a proposal together. Well, it's not easy, but you know you can do it. Uh, and then you never hear back about why that we were we didn't make the cut. So we did make the cut on both of those. Uh, Project Galaxy, they need seven to ten acres for a fifty thousand square foot uh, cold storage unit. And we didn't pitch the new park. We pitched Gary Carlson because we've got five and seven acres together that might be a perfect fit. Uh, that came straight from a site location consultant in uh, California. So that's a good thing. And then Project Bamboo. Uh, which is uh, just about a week old. This is uh, maybe a little, 10 days old. Um, a manufacturer, they need 50 acres, which we could do, as you know, uh, 14th Street uh, uh, goes north and then curves off to the west. And to the east of that road, all the way back to the end of the, the park, uh, there's 48 acres. So we have contiguous 50 uh, around that, that cul-de-sac, so we think that might work. The building is only 100,000 square feet, still a big building, but you could do it on less than 50 acres. Um, it's 200 to 350 million dollars of capital investment and 150 to 250 jobs. So it probably is a kind of company that might change the nature of the park, uh, but at 200 to 350 million of capital investment, uh, it may be uh, worth it. So we've submitted both of the two new parks in, in the, uh, uh, the county. Um, that was pretty recent when we submitted it, and so we haven't gotten any uh, feedback yet. But in the past, when somebody like a Project Bamboo needs 50 acres, we show them 50 acres of soybeans, and so this is this is yeah, uh, this is different. And I don't know whether um, is it okay if I pass out something. I know you've got organized stuff. Is that all right? Um, um, I think I've got enough for everybody. Uh, we ask well. We thought with the investment that you all have made and the investment that the county has made in these two new parks. And with uh, uh, Lansing's interest in us doing something to help them and their park, um, we thought it was uh, time to uh, 
go big or go home, as they say. And so uh, we've hired Candid Marketing and Communications out of uh, Kansas City. To, and they've worked with, a, we've vetted a lot of different firms, and these guys have done a lot of economic development marketing and a lot of marketing for communities. And so we ask them, um, knowing that our typical uh, budget for marketing is maybe twenty, twenty-five thousand a year, to forget that and just tell us what we need to do. And so um, on this last page, uh, they uh, split this into uh, 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 four phases. And so at today's meeting, in May, uh, they came to talk to us about their assessment of, of our marketing. And uh, uh, just uh, uh, a few days ago submitted this to us, and so today uh, presented this to the LCDC board. Phase one and phase two uh, would uh, refresh our logo, uh, de develop the creative uh, platform, uh, uh, brand standards, uh, kind of freshen up the brand, establish a, a CRM system, uh, emailing, marketing to make it easier for us to get that information out, uh, and a website rebuild. Uh, the website doesn't work on, on small uh, devices. Um, uh, it's, it's meant for 13, 15 inch screen and, and, and not something smaller. Uh, in addition, we need marketing materials, nice, sharp marketing materials on the uh, two new business parks. While we're doing that, it would be good to do that on Gary Carlson and, and Urban Hess. Mm -hmm. So they want to develop uh, marketing materials for us, uh, Google and trade advertising, some print ads, uh, drone videos, 3D modeling, um, uh, direct mail campaigns, uh, networking events, public relations, uh, and uh, continued uh, uh, website uh, maintenance. So uh, if you were to draw a line underneath uh, phase uh, a and B, that's 142,000 to 148,000. And that's something that I think the board uh, was interested in doing at a minimum. In addition, phase C, uh, more marketing collateral development, uh, six email campaigns, a broker windshield tour, get brokers out of the Kansas City area and, and look at, uh, spend uh, a few hours in the park. Um, and uh, then community awareness campaign, which would include some retail, some uh, travel tourism, some business retention and expansion. The, the, the uh, third and fourth of these phases would add another 100,000. And so at today's meeting, uh, it was uh, uh, d uh, decided to uh, dip into, since we don't, again, we don't have this money in our operating budget, but we do have some reserves. And to take what in essence is about half of LCDC's reserves and uh, fund phase A and phase B and uh, see where we are. And this is not going to take two or three years to do. This will take just a few months. And uh, the total uh, is um, uh, period is about 12 months, July of this year to July of next year to spend the hundred invest that 148,000. And uh, then um, sometime in late 2018 to early 2019, we talk about how we get the money, how we can reach out to the communities perhaps to fund uh, phases C and D. So uh, if we were ever holding the money for anything, um, it would be something like this. And so that's uh, what LCDC is uh, determined to do. In addition, I might mention that the Port Authority uh, under the leadership of Dan Gutschall, the committee is looking at um, renovating, re redoing, um, resuscitating the spec building program uh, that Gary Carlson uh, was successful on the, the smaller buildings too. And that would give your community, but also communities like Lansing uh, and, and others that don't have uh, the larger um, uh, business parks, an opportunity to uh, uh, finance uh, a six, a ten, a twelve, a fifteen thousand square foot metal building. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's exciting. Um, hopefully, I can keep up with it all. Uh, but uh, we're very excited at, at LCDC. So, appreciate the partnership. Any questions, for Mr. Jack? Is there anything you need from from the commission? I mean, from the standpoint Other of the money. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's we'll a good. I was I was talking maybe more. 
soft type things. But well, we did. Um, 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 uh, Taylor and and I uh, worked, I think, pretty well together on this project. We're continuing to follow up on the project trigger, and right. so right. Uh, I think when when we get these kinds of leads, that responsiveness that Paul and yeah. And Taylor have um, um, had has been crucial because, again, in the meeting, the meeting I will just take a second to, to mention the meeting that we were asked to set up yesterday was in the meeting room at the the Hampton Inn because everything else was full, so we we were there. We were asked because there was an interest in bringing KU to a meeting. They didn't want to have a separate meeting with KU and uh, Johnson County Community College with Paola and Miami County because those are the two communities on the Kansas side uh, still in play. Uh, and then have us have that same meeting again with Kansas City, Kansas Community College. We invited the two community colleges, uh, two folks from the engineering school uh, at KU, in addition to um, the uh, city manager in Paola, uh, my counterpart in Miami County, the assistant city manager, uh, George Brakovich from Tonganoxie, Taylor from Leavenworth. Uh, we had the water department. Joel was there, and Joel did a very nice job uh, uh, of uh, explaining what, what they can do. And um, uh, Ed Brocksterman from West Star, all in the same room with KCADC and the Department of Commerce and us. And so uh, when we, so we had a joint meeting, uh, and then the Paola people, Miami County people leave, the uh, schools leave, and then we pitch our communities. And then we'd get on the bus, show them this park, stay on the bus, show them the Tonganoxie Park, and say adieu as they make their way down to Paola. They took a look at that in the early evening and then drove out to uh, Mound Ridge. So, and they're finishing up today. So, my point is. It's a team effort, and so um, okay. there wasn't just one entity, LCDC or the city, or it's uh -huh. it's everybody, KCADC, commerce, utilities, uh, your economic development people. So when you think they'll pull the trigger, uh, that's <laughs> good. Trigger. Right? Um, and then trigger on trigger. Mm -hmm. I would think that we would know um, sometimes, sometime in the next couple of weeks, okay. uh, what Isn't that. that yeah, because we're the last of the states that they uh, visited, so. Um, and, and the exciting thing about it is I asked them what, what the look and feel of, of their facility would be, and they really want it to be uh, a really beautiful building that they can um, have as a kind of cornerstone to bring their clients to and things of that nature. So they want to... And they want to set the tone for the park to be really high quality and see if there's a way to... You know, continue that with other people locating there. So the role the commission would play in that is, with all of these leads, we have to give them a ballpark on economic development incentives. They all understand that that still has to be approved by the city commission. So we've given them an idea of what we think, but anything would then have to come back to the commission. So you'll you'd see it well before it it became uh, an actual project because you'd have to approve any incentives. So what we pitched to them was based off the policy that, that you approved. So. Yeah. I think that's been a good yeah. thing to have for yeah. you guys. It's been to very helpful. Right. Yeah. Something to work with. Yep. Okay, any other questions, Mr. Guy? Thank you very much. Thank sir. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, mm -hmm. City Clerk. Yeah, one one bunch of lives. Um, so I think that all the commissioners are pretty familiar with the city clerk's office. Um, we're a, just a department of four people, myself, the deputy, and the licensed clerk, and then a clerk two. So we're a small department. We're small but mighty. Um, and our budget is uh, pretty standard, um, not too many um, changes from previous years. A little bit of increase uh, of postage, as we usually do have to have. Um, insurance, um, we did, um, I think, just a standard 3% um, increase for insurance um, for the year. Um, and then supplies, um, so that there isn't really 
anything too exciting um, in my budget. It's pretty pretty standard. Um, there were two items that I had asked for um, supplemental that I didn't have previously or uh, a, a larger increase. One is um, election um, in every odd year. There's always the possibility of a primary um, with the city election for, with the commissioner. So got with the county uh, county clerk and she gave me an estimate of twelve thousand dollars to budget for um, okay. for election services. So um, anytime there's ten or more filed, I guess. It's yeah, it's three um, for every seat. Um, Every yeah, are, three, three are seats are uh, yeah, and there can be three um, candidates. So if you have more than three candidates per seat, so yes, our magic number is ten. Okay. So twelve thousand is to have all of the sites. Now, if you just have a city commission primary, some sites may see fifty people or less. You could do two sites, but again, that would throw, it would be drastically reduce the cost. Um, but it's up to the commission how many sites you want to do. The twelve thousand would be the full. Uh, complement of, of regular election sites. Well, we've always done yes, we have. Yeah, but I don't know that I advise changing that because yeah, then it just yeah. throws Change people off. Looks like we're playing politics yeah. with it. So, yeah. you know, we can do that, and that we know so, that. But I just want to make you aware that the twelve thousand yeah. is is every site fully staffed. Yeah. That's reasonable. Yeah, and it's not too bad. It's only every other. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's separate issue that when we meet with the legislators in November, December. I think that I would ask that they consider moving the city and school board elections back to April. That way, we file closing date of filings end of January, yeah. primaries in March, the elections in April. We take your seat immediately. Right now, you close your registration in June for an August primary, for a November election, for a January seating. For those that aren't running or are running and lose the primary, you've got a lame duck for six or eight months, which is not good. Uh, on the state, they say well, we do that on the state level, but they're not in session in the, in the fall. They're in session in the spring. And uh, the, ultimate, the reason they did do that a couple of years ago, they were going to, I, I believe, of course, they didn't quite state that. They wanted to make uh, uh, the city and school board elections partisan. But uh, I think it makes sense for the cities to go back to the previous way. Um, February, late February, uh, primaries, April elections, and the new commission takes their seat the following week. But that's nothing yeah. good. About I think there was some talk in Topeka at this session about the when they when the uh, commissioners take take their seat after the election because it was confusing to all the cities this this last year. Um, about when they got sworn in and all those things, but right. I don't see—I didn't see that there was ever any change made. That, but there was some and, brief know, discussion. Well, maybe, maybe we can get enough of them to see the why. I mean, the reasons they stayed. I don't know. Yeah, that's another time, another yeah. another discussion. Um, and then the other one, um, I always have codification services. So any changes to the city code, the city code book, and updating it on the website, um, there's always a fee every year um, to get that updated, and then just maintenance fees and that type of thing um, that run around ten thousand dollars, something like that. Um, and I did request um, for a full codification, recodification of our code. It hasn't been done, and it will be 23 years now. Um, and it's always good to redo those books periodically, usually more often than every 23 years. Um, um, but I think the, the time has come for that, so I did request um, that as well for this uh, for this coming year. On revenue, it's not much. By the way, what are roll fees? Um, right it, away. It's right away fees. Right away. Yeah. Okay. So if somebody okay. and and basically <laughs> if anybody does. Um, so if anyone wants to do a vacation of an alley or a street uh, or something like that, uh, that's that goes in that line. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Any questions, uh, Ms. Williamson? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Carla. So I believe that closes everything. Do we want to take a break before we go back for discussions? What do you want? Five
Cuba. Okay. Uh, we're all back, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's the wrap-up portion. Mr. Kramer, do you want to... Yeah, I, I just want to go over some process real quick so we have an idea of what we're looking at. The public hearing for the budget is on August 14th. What that gives us um, is two meetings between that if we make any changes to the budget. If you want to see anything to today um, that are dramatic changes, then we would go back and then we would have two meetings to then bring them back to you for approval. So if there's a consensus on the budget or if there's a few small tweaks and there's a consensus to move forward, you won't see this again until the night of the public hearing on the 14th. We would essentially be done. If there's anything that we have to go back and figure, then it would come back um, July 17th for review. Um, so we have those two meetings. So again, you can uh, uh, provide consensus, the budget as presented, make small changes in consensus, um, or direct staff to make larger changes that we would have to bring back for you. The only outstanding issue that I have a note that needs to be resolved is the decision on the Lions Club uh, charge. Um, other than that, it's all up to whatever you bring up in the wrap-up session. So if we could address that and then anything you, you all have. I wanted to clarify two rate increases. They, they, they're represented in the revenues, but um, refuse, um, the increase is $1.20 a month, and, and it's a dollar amount because it's a set fee. Um, and, that, and, and Curtis talked about that, and Mike hit on that, and I've hit on this before. Um, we buy a truck every other year, um, but as, as he mentioned, one of our newer trucks we, we had to trade in because of some issues with the engine and all that kind of stuff. So the downside of being a small lean organization is if you get your trucks out of cycle because you buy one that doesn't last its full period, then you have to buy one on the off year. So we need to buy a truck in 19, 20, and 21. And to accomplish that, um, would it takes a um, $1.20 a month rate increase. The other one is the sanitary sewer rate increase, which is which is what we do every year. And I just didn't mention the percentage, and it's a 5% rate increase uh, for sanitary sewer. And again, that has 40 different rates depending on use and classification, so there's no way to quantify that into dollars. Um, however, it's about um, a dollar a month or less for a residential user, depending on how much water you use. Does that show up on the water bill on the sanitary sewer? No. Y yes. 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 Okay. yes. And the refuse bill. Um, oh, those two. Right. Those two things are both included on the bill that you receive from the water department. Yeah. The second one is they calculate the water usage January through March based on your usage that first quarter. Then. And that's as your, your sewer rate, rate for the year. Following March. Yes. Yeah. So five percent rate increase. Yes. And call it, And the reason for that. Uh, essentially inflation so you have everything in there is is uh, provided by that rate so uh, okay. employee health but also then uh, root control plant organization plant. electricity the, the whole entire plant operations okay. is in this. All right. so that's all I had in closing um, let's well, talk the, uh, go ahead let's go ahead and see if we can take care of this line yeah that's, that's what I was gonna say oh. yeah uh, where would we be if we just charge 75 cents rather than the dollar Oh, I can do that quickly for you. Um, I think uh, you're at 2,500 for a dollar. So if you take away 25 percent of that, it would be 25500. You'd be at 1875. Yeah, yeah. You'd be at 1800 dollars. So Twenty-five dollars less. Yeah. I, I, you're charging. You know, you're you're bringing in change. Yeah. You know, six, it's, it's, 75 cents or having quarters ready at the yeah, service center, all that kind of well, stuff. And, and their proposal was. 10 cents more and last year it was five cents that he talked to me about the the, the guy who does that talk to me about the i think that you can discuss it as well as anyone here you yeah at, as in, as well as any I, one I, of the commissioners here right i know there's other people here that can discuss it at length, well and he but, brought something up that i didn't realize and that was the lansing the Lansing Lions don't get anything out of that. It's all ours. Yeah, the, they're an at-large member, so we don't pay. The yeah, Lions Club anything. doesn't so pay we Lansing. Still, but, we still collect that. Um, two teams out of the 23, 26 teams that are on the trash bag delivery, two are from Easton, so they pay about eight or $900 to Easton's Lions so that's Club. Yeah. Per, um, per year, so that's not that much then. Yeah. Per year, right? Right. Yeah. So that's not really that much, so I, I don't... 
I don't, I just, I think they're asking for 10 cents. I think we ought to negotiate here and just give them five. <laughs> <laughs> And they asked for five. They asked for five cents left. Yeah, no, they're asking. But you're for thousand dollars. Well, they've never asked for more. It's always been the same. And they've been doing this for about twenty years. That makes it instead of twelve cents a a bag if I buy them there to fourteen cents a bag. Correct. Sure, I mean, yeah, I mean six, <laughs> six dollars a roll to seven dollars yeah, a roll. You break it down to the bag, and those, you can do it that those way are too. But bags, and I don't think you can. Well, you're not going to find them on the open market. You're not going to find them for that price on the open market because they were very nice. And, and again, uh, your first two rolls will still remain at the floor. They're free. Yeah, they're free. They're, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're included in your reference bill. And they're not paying any more for those. Right, that's the main thing. I guess I'd be the main thing. I'm okay with it. Okay. Okay. I think we're kind of okay with it. Just the additional rules if you purchase them at the uh, uh, clerk's office, whether you're a resident or non resident. I mean, people from out of town can come in and buy them. I think it's a great deal. Maybe they do. I'm sure some people do. So yeah. that's because more fish can buy them. Are there any other issues uh, that anyone cares to speak? I don't think so. I thought it looked really good. You had all the contingencies in there, and in each, I mean, each one of the staff, I mean, everything seemed to be ju totally justified. So. I think, it, I think it looks really good. Yeah, I think it was a very well prepared and well presented yeah. Each year is getting better. Hmm. And smaller. And smaller. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll maintain the uh, middle levy as, as we proposed, uh, you know, your 31 uh, in the middle of you. Yeah. Uh, so no increases there. I mean, a slight increase. The library has an increase, but the city's mill rate yeah, uh, remains flat, mm -hmm. uh, providing the same services and some. What was that? Three eight five for the library. For the library. For the library, correct. For the benefits. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, that's it. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I I did appreciate our uh, conversation yesterday about um, thinking about devoting more money to roads, um, but. I recognize that this is not the year for a mill increase, but I think as we go forward in the next year, that uh, this, this time next year, that we should take a look at that. I mean, just in terms of trying to get ahead of the power curve, which is challenging with yeah. respect to roads in the city, but I did appreciate the conversation we had back and forth. I learned a lot because I, I didn't think we were going to have that conversation, but I'm, I have learned a lot more about how these two processes for the general budget, the operating budget, and the capital improvements plan budget works. So I would just say that, um, yeah, that's, yeah. I was happy we had it. And, uh, yeah, this is not the year to do that, but I think that well, we and just. Well, like Paul said, if we have the 20th Street project done. Sure. Then, you know, we may be yeah, able to yeah. do yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I would just like, I mean, my brothers eventually I'd, I'd like to see the the amount of, and I know that there was a increase that you made sometime in the last three four years from 700,000 to 1.3 I'd like it to see it maybe up at around 2 million but like I said that's a, a conversation we can have yeah. going forward in the future yeah. so and after we look at CIPs uh, well right you know I, mean, I think it'll be evident I, I can't speak for everyone that there's no slop in the CIP sure and to get that increase either we drastically reduce services in some area in, right right or we that is the, the, that's the trade-off right yeah so, uh, okay right. but I thought it was a good discussion yeah. I learned a lot yeah. so any other questions Mr. Wilson I'm very well pleased with the first budget here you guys yeah. uh, made it simplified for me yeah. um, thank you thank you yeah, thank you okay. so okay. Okay, I, I have the direction I need. Um, short of anything else, the next time you will see this will be at the public uh, budget hearing on August 14th. Okay. One, I'll, I'll make one comment that I don't want to predict in this budget, but I think in the following year's budget, uh, I think the time comes, you know, went on last year, first time in eight or 12 years, whatever it was, that there was a commission uh, salary increase. Oh, 14. Whatever it was, you know, a, a good period of time, and of course, when that does, you know, that's you know, it's like, oh my gosh, they raise the rate twenty five percent. I'd say not this year, the following year, 
maybe the commission salaries, if employees get an average 2.5 percent, the commission it just moves with that. So it, it's no longer political football. Every eight to 12 years, uh, I know, you know, this commission right now, this elected commission right now, will not see one of those increases come back. But I mean, if you run a couple more times and get elected, that, yeah, that commission where we're sitting here another six, eight years will have that, and it just becomes a real political football that it shouldn't be. Well, it's just you know, a two and a half percent. Uh, it's a good idea, I think. And, and just don't have yeah, to take the politics it out of it. Take the politics out of it. Address it as a yeah, but that that's for some future comments. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably see that whatever. with a sunset on it. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you go 20 years, you know, you've got a substantial increase. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that 2.5% of 20 years, uh, it's, well, you go with the rules of 72, so uh, you would have to use almost 3.5% uh, average for 20 years to double. So, yeah, but it would be, it would be something else. Yeah. Like it was, it did it this year, and once again, I'm not recommending that, it, it would amount to thirteen dollars and seventy five cents or something like that. Uh, seventy dollars a month on the overall budget, eight hundred forty dollars for the total year uh, on the overall city budget. But just a thought and I'm not proposing that but next year possibly I will and you know and if I'm not running the following year it'll have no effect on me whatsoever so I will take the multi out. Okay. Mr Mayor, I do yes, have sir. one other point. Um, what, what's the top line figure for the for the operating budget for 2019? Is that is that a hard? I mean, is it like 18, 19 million, 20 million, or do we? I, I'm, and if you don't know it now, you, yeah, I, I'm just wondering what that the top line figure is because yeah, there, there's just a lot of different top line figures depending okay. on what you're what you're actually including because okay. the operating budget includes about a million dollars in federal funds exchange okay it includes money from transfers okay, so a general fund top line we can get you I, i'll give you three or four numbers and tell you I what they each mean but yeah about 20 million mm -hmm. is is okay. the, the general fund operating budget okay the amount of money that flows through the coffers is approximately 50 million 50, uh, 50 million if you reduce the transfers out uh, if you take the transfers out it's 46 million because, and you can't really include the transfers because it's not additional revenue, it's just moving yeah, right. moving it from no. fund to fund. But you're writing checks. I mean, you're mm -hmm. handling 50 million, approximately $50 million through your office. However, we get it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and that's uh, Planners 2, oh, Section yeah, 8, yeah, yeah. CDBG, yeah. that are all yeah. federal yes, dollars. Yeah. They yeah. Think. Yeah, we're the custodians of $50 million. Mm -hmm. However, yeah. 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 That's, a fair, that's a fair thing. And the Commission oversees that because you determine right. the budgets right. of all those. Yeah. So you oversee a budget of that. Well, <laughs> We're not going to talk about that in open session, Larry. <laughs> you promised me. <laughs> Anything else? Any other questions? Uh, no, thank you, Ruby. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. sitting through here the whole time, Ruby. Thanks, Mr. Kramer. Thanks, Mr. Tedder. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Richmeyer, for being here. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry we don't have the fireworks to county yet. Yeah, sorry, what a good yeah, I'm sorry we don't have the fireworks to county yet. <laughs> <laughs>